Turn up, y'all. Turn up. Turn up. Everybody turned up. <laughs> I'm getting turned up. Everybody turned, turned, um, as, turned as my, as my husband here. likes to say, up to 11. Oh, yes, man. Aaron. All right, yes, guys, Aaron. before we start, we, before we start this episode, and I tell you who this most beautiful creature in the world is on my screen, uh, we're going to do a, a, a real time, <laughs> a real time review of Truly. Okay. So I've never had oh. one of these before. My fr my buddy Jack uh, suggested this, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give you guys some uh, a guru a guru moment. A first oh. What flavor? <laughs> what flavor is it? It, and I hope that like, I hope that my friend Kurt is here because I'm doing this for Kurt. Because um, <laughs> Kurt does he's he's a reviewer extraordinaire. So oh, this is truly a uh, hard seltzer with a hint of black cherry, 5% alcohol, 100 calories. So very nice. Here we go. You know, I, oh, think, yeah. I think this, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's flavored hairspray water that gets you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, it is. Oh, Chris is here. What's Hi, up? Chris. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Yeah, normally we actually, like, launch directly into the episode, but I wanted to, um, okay, somebody's already told me to start slouching, or st start slouching, <laughs> stop slouching, and it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't tell me who it, oh, is it Chris? Chris told me to stop slouching. Thank you. That's a sign wow. of a true friend. That is true. Hi, Randall. Hi, Randall. Hi, everyone. Hi, what's Randall. up? What's show up? God, somebody's already redeemed. Show us the beans. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. Let me Give get us it. beans. Give us beans. Phil. 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 <laughs> oh. He's <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now the party's starting. Hi. He out here. He out here. Oh, the baby. <laughs> oh, oh, he's man. so cute. Hi, everyone. Do I look like Phil? Do I look like Phil? <laughs> All right, guys. You, you know the drill. The first half, of we're going to do the episode. We're going to be professional, and we're going to... <laughs> Give our podcast director head whatever battle um, some content to actually work with and post that's not just yes. um, <laughs> us losing our minds. So, right. um, hell, Hellfire and Brimstone, yeah. hell, Hellfire and Brimstone, uh, we have begun. So, welcome everyone uh, to another episode of Bells of the Brawl with Battleground Podcast and a fancy new logo. <laughs> Check it out. I am uh, I'm notorious for doing things 10 minutes before I have to, like, actually stream. So I just completely changed everything today. Mm. Also can't get my my headphones are getting on my nerves. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of a new look. Um, and we've got a most beautiful angel sweetest just my she's my daughter like I don't even know what to say about her like <laughs> she calls she calls me dad because I just take care of her oh um this is Aaliyah <laughs> Aaliyah please tell the people who you are hi I'm Aaliyah I am Aaliyah J Page on 
Twitter if you guys don't know who I am. Uh, I've just been a wrestling influencer for God, who knows how long. Um, met these ladies, God, everything about them, love my life, Kayla, just met Lena today, and she's always amazing. Uh, I currently uh, wrestle, I'm in wrestling training, so I'm a trainee to be a wrestling manager, but I also do ring announcing, backstage interviewing, and commentary, and I'm just trying to make my way into the wrestling community, make a staple, make a, make a move, make changes and stuff. So look me and look at her. She's so adorable. She is. Oh man. So we're gonna, um, this is gonna be, I'm not gonna say that this is a different episode because we are gonna focus on Aaliyah. I burped a little. Sorry. (laughs) Um, truly. Should we rate, the, <laughs> should we rate the truly burps? One. Are the truly burps as good as the white claw burps? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to, like, I'll have to do another, like, test. I'll have to switch back to white claw next weekend because I only drink on uh, weekends. This is Thursday, but, you know, here we are. Um, so maybe I'll just have to do, like, this is just going to, I'll have to go back to test white claw and really give a good comparison. There we go. Um, like, which white claw have you been trying? Because my favorite, personally, is the Ruby Grapefruit. Tangerine. Ooh. Tangerine. Oh, so we just know. got, yeah, we just got on off on a total tangent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, usually what we do is we go through and we have our guests tell, you know, their story. And we will be doing that. Um, as you all know, uh, we started, well, I started on my personal channel um, and partnered with some other people, Sean Ross Sapp, um, Alex from Qu- Queen of the Ring. We um, actually opened a Minnesota Freedom Fund fundraiser this past Sunday. The campaign is still running, so I want to make sure um, to let people know that you should see a little banner at the bottom. We are at seventeen ninety-five, and I like that was that was just so outside of like the scope of my brain and like what I could handle and if you were here on Sunday uh, we had almost a thousand dollars within like not even two hours so I want us to take this time and I think that obviously everybody that's here and is in agreement uh, we want to take this time and discuss openly about what's going on um, I want Aaliyah to to really kind of lead us in a conversation and have an open discussion about, you know, race and wrestling. And that's not a story that we can tell, uh, Lena and I can tell, um, and, and we just want to offer a place to give some education and, and talk about experiences. So, um, Aaliyah, tell us, I want to know how you got into wrestling. Um, okay. yeah, yes. so tell <laughs> us, tell us your story. All right, so I tell this story a lot. I was, um, I wouldn't say bullied in the wrestling, but <laughs> so when I was younger, I was three years old. My very first wrestling memory was watching The Undertaker marry Stephanie McMahon. That is <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a traumatic years. first memory. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> traumatized me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? So I was with my godbrothers at the house. We were, um, I was being babysat by my godbrothers, and we were watching Raw. I didn't know what was going on, but something that extreme, even at a young age, will will <laughs> will stay in your memory that long. You know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> I still remember vividly her being on the little cross thing and the Stone Cold coming out. And, <laughs> and Shanrock and all that stuff, and I'm just, like, terrified. I still have nightmares <laughs> of Undertaker to this day because that was, a, that was honestly a traumatic experience for me. But I promise, like, wrestling still changed my life. But, you know, me, because my godbrothers watched it, I had to, you know, like, because they were, like, my older brothers. So every week, even though I was scared, I would still watch with them. And then eventually, as I got older... I started getting into the storylines growing, but I say I really, really got into it with the game SmackDown 2. Um, the video games are the ones that got me really into wrestling. So whenever we would play, one brother would play as Grandmaster Sexy, the other is Rikishi, and one would play as Sabi <laughs> And oh, I love <laughs> it. Six mans all the time. Like that was me. That was like our bonding time with us playing SmackDown 2. 
So once I got into that, I started learning about other wrestlers and stuff, and I wasn't allowed to watch wrestling in my house. It was something that was deemed inappropriate because, you know, the sexual themes and the cursing and all the themes, like even like all the really mature themes wasn't really something for a five-year-old to watch, you know, but you know, me, me, I was really mischievous and devious. I had a TV <laughs> in my room at a very young age. I would watch with my aunt and aunt, uh, I would watch my godbrothers, and then I would also go to my aunt's house. Um, and my uncle, with my cousins, would watch wrestling as well. Like, he was, like, Monday night, 9 o'clock, we're sitting there, and I spent a lot of summers with them, so that's how I got into it a little bit more. And it kind of taught me a little bit more. And then I started watching on my own. I would have to sneak it on my TV. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then now I'm just a real big diehard. So, um, yeah, that's how I got into wrestling. I was traumatized by the energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But how did that evolve into, when did it evolve into you wanting to train? Okay. When, when, what, what was the moment? I'm sure that these are like very yeah. generic questions. I mean, I'm, no, I'm, 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 we're easing in, we're easing in. We got it. Everybody's answer is different. So, yeah. growing up, well, like as I got older, like kind of my teenage years, early college years, I just knew that I wanted to be in wrestling in some way, shape, or form. Like, I changed my major four times in college. <laughs> so, at first, I wanted to be a nursing student, but I wanted to do medic uh, medical i want to be in the medical team for the wrestlers you know because i would watch documentaries and stuff about wrestlers injuries and i wanted to be on that team to help them so but then i was like okay i'm really bad at biology so going into nursing school isn't going to help me at all so that's when i got into content creation and graphic design so when i went into graphic design i was like okay i wanted to create the titan Chons and go into video production for for WWE, that was kind of like my goal, like, boom, this is something I'm going to do in wrestling. But, of course, I kind of went out of graphic design. Of course, I still graduated as a media production student, but I didn't necessarily pursue it, you know what I mean? I'm very skilled in content creation, but not to that degree. Like, I'm not a really good motion graphic designer at all. I, I can't do that stuff. I can edit it. I can edit the hell out of a video and edit the hell out of a documentary and a movie, but that's it. Like, I can't do all the extra editing and stuff. So, la- in 2018 was when I lived in California. I lived in California for one year. It was the best slash worst year of my life. I went through a lot of hell living there. It wasn't meant for me, but it's something that definitely opened up my wrestling, like, third eye. I went to a bar wrestling show with Anissa. I don't know if you guys know Anissa. She was here uh, Sunday. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yes, I love (laughs) Anissa so much. I went to a bar wrestling show um, in January. And I think it was 2019. Yes, it was January 2019. And we were talking about just things that I could do. I was like, I have so many ideas. I wanted to integrate wrestling and Disney together so bad. I was like we need to do something with this. I want to bring my YouTube channel back and I want to integrate wrestling into it. And she was just like, well, I think you should look at these podcasts and uh, network with these wrestlers, blah, 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 blah. They look at schools. And while I was researching schools, I kind of liked learning about managers, like how the role of how they train managers. So I did a lot of research. It just seems that the schools in California just weren't for me, not to mention I just wasn't really feeling California at all anyway. So I made the decision to move down to Texas in April. I got a job down here. I packed up my car and I moved here in May. Um, I still did more research. I was like, I kind of want to get into this managing thing, but I need to find a a proper wrestling school. I went to VIP wrestling in July. I I remember this day, it was July 5th. I went to VIP wrestling with Monica. I, don't know, I think everybody knows Monica. And, <laughs> and, uh, and I met some people there. I met my, my, my coach now. And the picture of me with prime time popped up. And I met. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. 
you're fine. No, you're you're uh, fine. Yeah, I really like story. It's still. I mean, <laughs> if you're getting an if you're getting yeah. emotional, that means that it's an important part of the story. So yeah, yeah. I um, I went to go take my picture with them, and they put me on each on and stuff, and we took the picture. Love that picture, by the way. She yeah. looks gorgeous <laughs> with the new belts and stuff because they had just won a tag team championship like right there before they won the intermission to take pictures with Pam. So. I was just saying, hey, I love you guys. I'm just wrestling. We took the picture. I showed them the picture. They were like, you look really good. You look to be like our manager. And I was like, well, actually, I was thinking about researching stuff and managing. And he said, talk to Lou. And um, he, Shad basically told me to go for it. Like, if you really feel that this is something that you're really passionate about, be sure to. Uh, <laughs> months later I reached out to Lou and he said even though you want to be a manager you don't want to wrestle you still have to try out like everybody else so and this happened I sent an email Saturday night and he was like yeah uh, it was Friday night actually and he was like yeah we have a tryout tomorrow and I'm thinking okay it's, <laughs> but I read it then I read it Saturday morning so I was like okay tomorrow's Sunday and he was like oh no it just starts at, it starts at like nine o'clock so I'm like Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I hurried up and got dressed. He was like, it's okay. We can reschedule. I'll wait for you. I was like, no, this is something that I really want to do. It's because if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it eventually. So I went to the tryout. I met Lou and another trainer that was there at the time. And I tried out with, it was two other people. It was me, a girl, and a guy who the guy I'm still like really. I, I am still really close to at this moment. Um, and I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to go through the work. I'm just going to go through the tryout. This is, I don't really want to be in the ring, but I'm going to go through. The, if he says this is what I have to do in order to get into the school, then that's what I'm going to do. And the tryout isn't necessarily a tryout. It's just for you to get in the ring and see what you're going to be getting yourself into. So mm -hmm. you start with rolls and you take bumps and all that stuff and if you feel that you could have the physical capability of getting through that and you still want to put your money into this then sure which i find is a really 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 good tool for new students instead of other wrestling schools who just take your money and then right. they, and then you just don't have any money anymore it's like mm -hmm. hey you should the tryout if it's not for you i'm not gonna waste your time you're not gonna waste mine so i'm just like yeah i'm your manager Blah, 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 blah. I couldn't get back rolls to save my life. Like, I was at that tryout and I was so pissed that I just could not roll backwards properly. Like, I could roll backwards, but just not the proper and safe way you need to do for wrestling. So mm -hmm. I got so frustrated that I told him, like, when he, he said that I, sh I would be a good fit for the school, anyways, that I was like, hey, I need to get these freaking back rolls take my money, I'm going to learn how to do these, and then I'm going to go away. <laughs> and then, uh, almost a year later, here I am, training, doing shows, and... <laughs> hey, she, yes. and she's, um, she's at DFW. Yeah. Um, you can find videos of her online in her cute little two-piece suit uh, <laughs> that um, I am proud to say that I, I, I had a hand in choosing where you just, like, Oh, I've just I've been so proud um, yes. because Kayla is my artistic director. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you know, you guys, um, if you've been here or you've been listening to the podcast, you've met several women so far that have been a huge part of my life for the past almost three years. Um, yeah. And honestly, oh, when we've years, changed yeah. each, we've changed each other's lives. We've helped each we've helped each other grow professionally. Um, a lot of us have had realizations of what we want to accomplish in the community. Um, I mean, we we're very much a collaborative group of women who I mean we run ideas past each other for literally everything I think. So, Aaliyah. <laughs> we can talk about Shadow. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't don't apologize for being emotional. You're this is your Yes, I'm the emotional one in the it's, group. It's <laughs> again, again, like father like daughter. Um 
And Aaliyah's just always been somebody that I've been very protective of because, like, I do feel like she is my family and I'm the elder. So <laughs> you want to see your you want to see your friends succeed, and everybody that you've seen and heard on the show so far are are a big group of friends, and that's how it started. But now we're evolving into honestly, and and I don't say this to like gas everybody up, but we are the future of wrestling. <laughs> We're the future of the industry. That is true. We're the people that are going to be working backstage, in the ring, out of the ring, doing commentary, doing merch. I mean, uh, we're seeing a lot of these women grow, and that's why I want to make sure that we're giving them a platform and letting them promote themselves because this is, you know, you're always going to have that new era in wrestling, and you're always going to have people phase into the industry, and I think it's important to give those people a platform. Because let me tell you, she's going to take over. You don't yes. understand. I can tell. I can tell she's going to. I've seen, I've, seen the, I've seen the secret promos that, that only like a handful of people have seen. And she's, but what, what, what is the most important about how hard Aaliyah works is that she is dedicated to this despite being absolutely petrified. She puts her all into it and she's fucking dove into this and I'm just I'm so proud of her and it's it's really fun to be a part of a group of people that you're seeing them get all of these incredible opportunities so tell us that brings me to t- I want you to tell <laughs> us what you've been doing with DFW like tell us about how that started what was you know what was the moment where they were like okay we're gonna have you you're gonna start being on camera tell us that story yes. okay so um so I was introduced to camera fairly early, like definitely earlier than um, other students were. And it has to come with, I mean, I'm not very sure why he decided to choose me over other students that were in my class to kind of take that. Ex- it's not really accelerated for us. She's so humble. <laughs> She's well, so I don't humble. Know. I- I'm like, well, I'm the shit. Like, you, well, are. Like, you are. Like, she you are. You are. I can tell. <laughs> she, she is the most humble total package you will ever meet. Like, well, so um, humble. Well, one day my my trainer was like, hey, I want you to start doing backstage interviews with another partner that I had, Dylan, who I love so much. Me and Dylan <laughs> work really well together doing interviews with the wrestlers back, like, backstage after the show. So that happened within like a month. The first month and a half, I did security at shows. Like I was doing security, making sure that crowds didn't go into the ring, like playing talent whenever we were like all out anywhere, matches. Like I was like front row, like laughing people and stuff. So I did security. <laughs> One show I was helping set up and my coach was like, hey, I need, I want you to start doing interviews with Dylan. Do you have a change of clothes? I was like, yeah, of course I have a change of clothes. I'm like, duh, like, I know wrestling and I know women in wrestling. You always have a change of clothes in your bag. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So I started doing interviews with Dylan. She comes prepared. November 1st at a VIP show. So I was the intern. I was the brand new intern for Pro Wrestling Dallas um, backstage interviewing team. So Dylan would teach me the ways, but I ended up kind of stealing his spotlight in the end because uh, I was ended up being promoted full time without his guidance. And then I ended up being commissioner of the DFW All Pro Women's Program. So we have once so I think cool. it's either once a month or once every other month we have an all women show, and it it showcases all the DFW All Pro Women um, graduates or a. Um, Women, women's wrestlers from affiliate schools in Texas. So the last, like one of the last shows we did, I was officially appointed commissioner for the MW All Pro Women's Show. So I was kind of like the on-screen uh, head of charge for that show, which was awesome. Like the fact that he trusted me to do that is amazing. It's helping with my on-screen persona, which is, if I, I can't believe I didn't say my name. My wrestling name is Davina Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't go by Davina right now is because <laughs> I wanted to be completely transparent. Like this isn't me cutting up from or anything. This is Aaliyah. This is me. 
I am at the sides. I haven't graduated yet, so I can't really, um, really broadcast the unit like that. I, mean, I haven't been doing much. I was going to, but then the pandemic happened right when like my ramp up was going to start happening. But it's okay. Wrestling is starting to open back up down here. So it's going to be coming soon. But my name is Davina Campbell. She is the finest diamond from Detroit City. And I love it. I love <laughs> and, it. <laughs> right? I, I came up with it. So <laughs> I am so, yes, the finest diamond from Detroit City. And I will be managing. Well, we'll have to find out. <laughs> yes. She froze and she's still beautiful. Not really I know. She's still beautiful. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I started I with that. backstage interviewing and then it went to ring announcing. And then we had one show where we did, uh, it was kind of like before the show started, the wrestlers would come in and you would do interview segments called Real Freak. Um, me and Dylan did that. It eventually, unfortunately, an incident happened that um, during that time we lost one of our students during that show, like the night of that show. So we haven't been, we haven't had a chance to continually progress with real break. But I know it will be happening. We're going to build it back up soon. It's just kind of something that wasn't really on our minds at the moment because mm -hmm. we just wanted to get the wrestling shows done. We didn't have time for all the extra stuff during that time. So um, yeah. Yeah, so I I do ring announcing. I was on commentary for a show, which was really fun. I was fired by NASCO. <laughs> I, I was fired at the backstage. Everybody was fired by NASCO for one show because he is <laughs> part of the board of directors and he wasn't rehiring the backstage interviewers. So he rehired me as a commentator, and then he had Dylan wrestle for his life against the leader of the DFW cartel, Lee Batty. So <laughs> unfortunately, Dylan lost. So I haven't heard from Dylan in a minute, but I have my job back. So, okay. <laughs> so what has been your Dude, favorite role that. so far? Like you, you've yeah. already worn like you've already worn several different hats. So what's been your favorite so far? I don't know. I just love working with everybody with interviews. Like, uh, uh, what indie group is this? Oh, this is DFW All Pro. That's my wrestling school. DFW Wrestl um, Wrestling Academy is the school. DFW All Pro is the wrestling company. And they are affiliated with VIP Wrestling. <laughs> so, yeah. So, my favorite hat so far, I see the question in the chat. Um, my favorite so far is definitely interviewing. I love working with the wrestlers in the back and um, and just getting their, just hearing their stories and getting their raw reactions from their matches is really, is really exciting to see. You see it in, per like you see it on TV all the time, but to actually experience it in person, the adrenaline is pumping, they're excited or they're really pissed off and to be able to <laughs> ask tough questions and know that they won't touch you is really like <laughs> yes. it it's so much fun um, where are you based in oh i'm based in dallas i am in the dallas fort worth metroplex oh i feel like that's yeah so um guys we'll we'll have a little bit a little bit more conversation with the Leah go here in just a second. Um, if you guys want to start submitting questions for her, uh, once we come, you know, once we finish the official episode, um, we'll be yes. able to, uh, let our hairs down and, um, <laughs> maybe drink another truly and answer some questions. So if you have questions for Aaliyah, um, definitely ask her and get those in the chat and then we'll go back through and pick out a couple to read. So, um, yes. Lena, you got, you got anything off the top of your head that you want to know about Miss Aaliyah? Uh, yes, Aaliyah. I want to know if you have any favorite managers, like who's inspired you? Oh my gosh, this answer is so <laughs> controversial because the one answer that I give is going to shake the table, if that's okay. All right. Yes, please. Nancy Benoit. So, nice. her as Respect, woman, dude. Rest in woman. peace. Dude, rest in um, peace. Nothing it shakes the table here. because we know the controversy that's happened with her and right. her, her unfortunate loss. But mm -hmm. she was just such a power tool in the 80s and 90s. Yes. Um, another one is definitely Sensational Sherry, for sure. Oh, uh, excellent. Fable. 
Oh yeah, we were talking Sable, about Sable sure. not too long ago. <laughs> uh, of course, Lita was definitely one of the biggest. Um, well, Lita and Trish were definitely one of the biggest manager slash wrestler roles that were when I grew up. So, uh, of course, all of mine are are women. Of course, I love Paul Bear a lot, and Paul oh, yeah. is like God to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> all everybody knows great how much choices. I love Paul Bear, and with affiliate and affiliation, it's definitely. Uh, Paul Heyman, Polly Dangerously has changed wrestling more than I think any other manager in wrestling has. Mm -hmm. Just he wore so many different hats and to get in so many different pots is kind of what I want to do. Clearly, I'm like all over the place (laughs) so far. And to have an impact, I may not run my own wrestling company, but I do want to have as much of an impact in wrestling as he did. But definitely different as a black woman versus uh all i love that so much and another kind of random question is as a manager as a wrestler would you prefer or have you been a face or a heel what do you think is more fun (laughs) i guess i can answer um, that but (laughs) i'm definitely uh everybody knows me Everybody knows that I would have heard a fly. <laughs> I'm very, I'm the, I'm the fight, like, I'm the mediator. I break up the fights. Yeah. But the <laughs> is a heel. <laughs> yes. A heel where you just can't really trust her because she's just so sweet, you know? Right. Which is definitely so much. Kayla. Like, it's such a, I turned on Dylan. <laughs> I definitely turned on Dylan and I took his job. But, like, <laughs> but I was just being me and doing what I was told. Like, yeah. Like, really? <laughs> That's well, she's yeah. using her feminine wiles. Yes. Well, I loved it when I was on your Instagram earlier um, and I was watching some of your promos and the one when you're going down the hallway. Dylan! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I love it so much. Yeah, like, I just gotten fired. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, I didn't you, know what to do. Let so me tell awesome. you that so I awesome. have seen, I've seen just a small bit of the vision that Aaliyah has for herself, and it's just, yes, it's so good. On. It's so good. Like, it's so good. I've never so good. like, I've never met anybody with the type of vision that she has. Um, and her vision is really, really just, it's going to be so incredible. So My main thing oh, I is love that it. I know that black women in wrestling is very prominent, but we are still a very, very small space and we are typecasted definitely. So as much as I'm, I'm super pro black, super nerdy, all that stuff, but mm-hmm. I want to take it to, you know, a different level, give them a different view of what black women are. We're not just the, uh, we're not just this, the braids and the fists and stuff. And I'm definitely that, like, please, please don't come for my blackness or anything because that's definitely a trigger for me. But diamonds are a girl's best friend. Pretty in pink, like, <laughs> being super bougie is definitely another element of black women. And that is what Davina definitely represents. She definitely represents that you... You can't put a penny on me because I'm definitely the brightest thing in the room and you're not going to stop me. I'm going to get what I want, get what I want, whatever, in whichever way possible. And you can, you can kick my ass all you want to. You're not going to shut me up and you're not going <laughs> to stop me from getting what I want. So I love and I've gotten my ass kicked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get my ass a lot. Yeah. But I always get what I want. So Yes. <laughs> So can you give us a little hint about, do you know what's next for Davina? Like it's, it's just, it's, but at the same time, like, I feel like you probably are very much in a place where that's like not in your head. I mean, we, we talked a little bit about before we started the show that we were absolutely going to address what's going on. Um, I mean, if you've been here the past couple of weeks, like we have not really been talking about current events in wrestling. We're not watching anything. Um, I mean, I, I see what happens on Twitter, but 
Mm-hmm. Our minds are somewhere else. So if you're, you know, if you yeah. want to know what happened on NXT last week, like other than <laughs> Candice LeRae, like I the, all I know now. is that Candice LeRae came out as a heel. And that's, and that's the only like, thing oh. that I've been paying attention to. Like I can't even yeah. like guarantee yeah, that I'm going to um, watch I, NXT this weekend. I know Kayla knows this. Um, but I've kind of just been taking a back burner on everything during this pandemic. I lost my job, which was something that was really, uh, it kind of like took me to my mind into a brand new place. And just the pandemic in general, it was very uh, difficult. I think the first thing that kind of really triggered me was I couldn't go to Disney World. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask well, about Lauren, that. Lauren and Alex have already been on here, so we've already bitched about I think, like, that? The yeah, past, I, like, I think the past, yeah, like, like, every episode, we've bitched about missing WrestleMania, but, like, mostly missing Disney World. So. I know. I was going to ask about if there are any plans to go. Well, we don't know. Not yet. I don't, not I don't right know now. yet. Yeah. Uh, there's an, well, there is an official date, but I kind of want to wait until the phases kind of grow up. Yeah. Again. But I remember that day that they uh, they announced that it was closing. Like, mm. you don't know how, how many apps and DMs I got that day from people oh, just being no. like, I am so sorry. <laughs> we literally <laughs> just, like, stayed in our little, like, sad bubble for, like, a week. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, then, even like, and it was like very like minimal, even talking to each other. Like it was yeah. like we checked in like once a day, and then we left each other alone because like, you know, the pandemic hit. You lose this trip that you've been meticulously planning for paid over for. a year, mm-hmm. and paid for. Alex is heartbroken. Like everybody's yeah, heartbroken. Know. We had we had all looked so forward to it. And I watched freaking Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, like, <laughs> she, yeah. She watched she watched the entire Star Wars series. We forced her oh, to watch it man. just to not go. Um, <laughs> so we'll we'll get to all of that. We'll we'll get a little bit uh, looser yeah, about all of that here in a little bit. But it was crazy. Um, like after Disney, because I'm really I'm a really big Disney person, and then right after that, I lost my job. So kind of like everything just kept hitting me at the same time, and and then I lost my uncle. So like this whole pandemic time has just kind of been really hard for me. And I'm just now getting back into like my mental health being good. Like now the gym is open, so I have an outlet to <laughs> to do yeah. things. But, the, but over this time, I haven't really had a chance to think about wrestling. Yeah, I watch WrestleMania, and I love watching WrestleMania. Uh, WrestleMania was really fun for me to watch this year. It did give me a break from everything that's going on right now. But um, and then I I've been watching Raw. So I started at Raw like the first episode of Raw of 2000. And I've been watching since then. I'm, I'm at September wow. now, so that's kind of like my my wrestling content. Cool. But besides that, I haven't really done anything with it just because it's not really in my head right now, and it's definitely not in my head right now due to what's going on at the no. moment. So that is the I last thing. Agreed. Of yeah. of it, but also so disconnected with it at the time. So because of that, I don't know where Davina is coming right now. Like I said, I haven't really gone to training yet. Like it, it started back up, but. I'm taking my time coming back. Mm-hmm. I want to get back into shape and just kind of make sure my head is good before I get in there. Yeah, and, yeah. and that just sure proves how much you care. Yeah. yeah. I mean, be, making sure that you're in a good head space, that you're in, you know, you're in fighting shape and that you're as, like, as prepared as you possibly can be. Like, nobody can take, mm-hmm. nobody can take that kind of time right now. Right. And it's just, we're... I feel like we're very much at like, I mean, if you're here and you follow us on Twitter, if you follow us on Instagram, like, you'll know that like, we are very much not, our heads are not into the stories and the drama and and everything. It's about what's actually happening in the world. Um, So I'm, I'm not going to, we're not going to ask you questions about what's going on. We're not going to ask you about your experiences. (laughs) We're not going to ask you about your experiences. That's not for us to ask you to share. What I do want to do is I actually, because, I mean, Elena, unless you have anything else for her, I want to give her the floor to to say what she needs to say. 
I just want to throw one more thing at you. And I know that I've told the other girls this, and I might seem like a super fan of the Wrestle Bays, <laughs> which I am. You, and she which is, I am. But she, she tends to forget that she is also a Wrestle Bay. A Wrestle Bay. Like. And, and I just feel like it's just too much. Can I be a Wrestle Bay? You are. <laughs> You've always been one. Thank you, thank you. Elena, the the moment that you texted me and told me that you got a Becky Lynch shirt, that's the day you became a wrestler. (laughs) Oh, good, yay. The moment, Aaliyah, I'm just, I'm too honored, man. Yeah, Aaliyah, I don't know if you know the story about how Lana got into wrestling. She was into it as a kid. Um, Mm -hmm. But we did, um, when I had my horror movie podcast, she was also one of the hosts of the horror movie podcast. And Eli and Mm -hmm. I talked about uh, wrestling so much that she got (laughs) back into it. Uh, yes. And she's been into it. It feels so good. Yeah, and, and it feels now, so good too. And now she's met Alex. She's met Lauren. Uh, she's met Alexis. She's going to uh, meet so many more feel, people. And I, I am so honored hey, to be able to like introduce uh, her to everybody. And I am honored because it's like, it's so inspirational to me. Like, oh my gosh. I've just loved everybody. And Aaliyah, you, is, <laughs> you especially. Um, but I wanted to say was the don't rush challenge, which I've talked about too many times. I loved, I loved your segment with the Bianca Belair shirt and and the booty, the booty slap. She was my favorite. Cause let me tell you, Aaliyah and a red lipstick. So good. Oh, and that. My mm. favorite. Kate me in a red lip. I, I swear love it. I, I, pr- I try to pressure it into it. <laughs> she, she knows anytime it. she asks me to choose a lipstick color that my answer is always <laughs> going to be red. For her and Alex, it's always red. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put on the red and be like, I hate this. I'm put on the brown. And with a glass of but she, Lena, she I was, yeah, she was, Aaliyah, you were our favorite. <laughs> it was fabulous because I, I did the first one and i was just like alex this isn't me like, <laughs> she, I, looked yeah, she really like I definitely looked good but i was like this isn't me i have to do something else like i have to do what i gotta do it was so, so good yeah. yes <laughs> and i need you to teach me how to cut that shirt oh yeah absolutely like hold <laughs> so cute now. i need yeah i need you to teach me how to do that so yeah I'm, Lena's gushed over at the Don't Rush Challenge. All the girls that have been in it. So all far. the girls, like, yes. Love it. But I loved your booty slap. That was my <laughs> my chef's kiss moment. So good. Mm. Well, um, <laughs> Lena, um, I'm gonna let her take the floor. Aaliyah, this is your time to drop your socials. Say whatever you, whatever you want to say. Whatever whatever's in your heart. Um, yes. It can be. I mean about what's going on it doesn't have to be just anything that you want to get out it's your uh it's your turn absolutely so again my name is Aaliyah. you can follow me on twitter at a-l-i-a-j-p-a-i-g-e i would definitely love for you guys to follow my wrestling journey davina campbell is definitely going to be making an impact it's not in 2020 due to this pandemic 2021 is definitely our year so if you want to be a part of the diamond game Definitely follow me at Davina underscore Campbell. That's D-A-V-I-N-A underscore C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L at Twitter. And at Miss Davina Campbell on Instagram, which is M-S period Davina Campbell on Instagram. Um, What I do want to say is that please, we know this is a tough time, especially for Black people at this moment. Uh, We are mourning and we do need to support of everyone. The, com- uh, the country is very negative, and this is turning into the largest civil rights movement that this world has ever had. It's not only affecting the U.S., it's clearly going into um, other countries as well that is standing up for us. So please, your voice matters. It's showing that it matters. So many cases are being opened up right now that um, that is definitely helping us. It's justice. All we want, the only way to get peace is through justice. All you want to do is be treated normally. <laughs> That's all we, black people are always seen as a spectacle or a threat. And while that's not the way that we want to be seen. So please continue to spread awareness. Please continue to all of our allies, please continue to listen to us. Some people may not have the right intentions, but at the end of the day, we all just want 
our voices to be heard. That's all we're getting. We're just desperate for us to be heard. Um, I am in Texas, so <laughs> uh, the South is kind of very uh, diverse right now. But luckily, I have a lot of allies here. My wrestling school is definitely 100% with us. I'm glad to have a Black trainer who uh, who supports all of us through and through. I have a boyfriend who, uh, he's a white ally. He loves me and he stands up for all of our rights through and through, which is so comforting for me to hear and see. Continue to donate, continue to spread awareness. Please donate to um, the Minnesota Freedom Fund. It's going to help all of us. Donate to any um, bail bond um, GoFundMes that there are out there. There are people who are being wrongly arrested due to trying to make a change in the country that clearly doesn't want change. So um, this has happened so many times in history. It's like it, 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 we suck and we hate that it has to get this severe, but it's going to be for a good cause. So continue to support us, make your voice heard. We're changing the world each and every second that this is happening. And it's a beautiful thing, even though there's so much pain that goes with it, it's beautiful. Seeing the support that I'm getting from like all of you, everybody here in this podcast, on my Twitter, it, it's fantastic. So continue to donate, continue to support, spread awareness, listen, learn, be sure to listen. Because sometimes uh, we get really defensive. I know that I do sometimes because that just means I'm a very emotional person, but it's something that I really need to work on. Um, listen to both sides. It doesn't mean you have to attack both sides, but conversation is what leads to solutions. So continue to support us. Happy Pride Month, not just Black people. Uh, so many LGBT allies have helped us in our movement and we should be the same. So it is Pride Month. I am I am not in the LGBT community, but I am a bona fide ally. You know, guys, I've got you. I'm going to support you every which way that I can. So continue to donate to uh, Black LGBT as well. Ayanna Brown did not deserve what happened to her at all. Support Black trans women. Support Black women in general. We are the most unprotected people in America. Not the most said it best. Like black women are the most unprotected people in America, and we need to be heard. We need to be protected. We need to be saved. And that's all I have to say. Just do the right thing. Everybody knows what the right thing is, and if everybody just stays on that mindset, we, there would be peace, and we would be having any of this stuff right, uh, any of this stuff right now. So, do what you have to do. I'm Alia. Um, I'd love to meet all of you. I can't wait for wrestling to come back. I like miss going to shows with all of you and meeting all of you. So once that comes back, definitely hit me up, say hi, and let's make some love, man. I'm all about love and peace, and I'll cry with you at a wrestling show. That's, that's my thing. <laughs> so. Oh, beautifully said. Yeah. Have we cried you're, at a wrestling show together? You're a wonderful soul. Huh? Have we cried at a wrestling show together? No, but we've definitely yelled and screamed at one rumble <laughs> where you had to save me from running down the stairs and dragging Mandy Rose. Oh my god. I will have what? I will have to find that video. It's what? somewhere. I have it. It's yes. my favorite video yeah. cuz I knew we were so tired that weekend. Like I've never seen myself snap. Yeah, tell the like, story. Tell the story. Yes, yes, yeah, like, please. Tell the story. <laughs> that oh guys, really out. quick. We uh -huh. just got Another donation. We are yeah. at eighteen forty-five for the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Almost nineteen hundred dollars. Like crazy. Yeah. I Amazing. think Hannah just Amazing. donated again. Yes, Hannah. Oh my God! I thought she oh. left. Hannah at work. Oh my God, <laughs> Hannah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Eighteen forty-five, guys. Um, for the That's Minnesota Freedom Fund. Words. I can not. Money, hey, I cannot fantastic. believe it. I cannot believe it. I'm so thankful. Um, Amazing. Well, I mean, I guess technically we are probably almost at um, 2000 because I am donating um, all of my revenue for the whatever, whatever I'm paid out. I'm going to donate my revenue. So anybody that's subbed to me, anybody that has 
cheered yeah. in chat. Um, anybody that does that for the rest of the stream, just know that I am, I'm donating that money. That money is not, I, I cannot in good conscience um, sit here and give a platform and, and not do my part. So yeah. Hannah, thank you. Oh my God. You're the best. Please have the greatest night at work. I love Hannah so much. Guys, oh we, have seen, we have seen everybody in the chat um, say such wonderful things. Thank you for bearing with us while we record the episode. Um, I know it's a little bit less, less interactive at the beginning, but let us drop the socials. We're going to take a two-second break long enough to maybe use the restroom, grab another drink, and then we are going to come back and answer some questions. Uh, whatever you want to ask Aaliyah, Yay. put in the chat. Um, if you want to ask all three of us, if you have a topic that you want to discuss. Oh my God, Alex is in here gifting subs to Adnaris. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. So cute. Like seriously, Yay. the most, <laughs> like the, so we uh, are, we are surrounded by the most uplifting and supportive oh, yeah. people. And Absolutely. I am oh, so man. thankful that everyone has, um, I mean, you literally don't have to donate in the form of a sub, but you doing that helps me and I'm very appreciative of it. Um, and I will make sure, I think at the end of the week, like Sunday, I'm going to try and figure out if I'm able to actually cash out. Um, thank you, Randall. Thank you so much. You've already donated. Woo! I appreciate you. Um, you did not have to donate again. I thought you donated last time. Um, but thank you. Um, yeah, I will, f I will post a, um, Alex gifted subs after I used my Twitch truck prime <laughs> kind of crazy. Chris, it didn't yeah. even let me tell you. Oh, yay. Um, it, it did me dirty because it didn't even tell me that you subbed. It just says that you followed me. So sorry about that. If you <laughs> if you subbed with Twitch Prime, thank you. Um, but I will be posting a like final total. So everything that we've gotten through the campaign through Tiltify and then a screenshot of my revenue so you guys can kind of know a, a final total of how all of that turned out. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to have um, Lena take us out with her socials. Um, I'll remind you of mine, even though they're somewhere on this page. <laughs> and uh, we will take a quick break. All right. You can find me on Instagram at Lena Del Beer, all one word. And same on Twitter at Lena Del Beer. Um, yeah, that's all I got. And you, Kayla? I am the Sheenom here. I am the Sheenom, uh, T-H-E-S-H-E-N-O-M, like the Phenom, but the Sheenom because I'm a lady. That's like my <laughs> shitty tagline. Which I love that's it. Like my yeah. 20, I told a story where I thought it said Shenron instead of Sheenom. Yeah. So I had in my phone Kayla Shenron for the longest Shinrom. time. Shenron. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to make it only two. And she that's never, so cute. She and yeah, she didn't change it for a long time. So yeah, uh, the dot Sheenom on Instagram. Um, yeah, we're Battleground Podcast, Bells of the Brawl. Uh, we'll have our own logo eventually. Um but for now, we've just got the the general logo up. Thank you to Battle for sending that to me last Thanks, minute Battle. today. Um, he is the man that <laughs> rips all, and edits out all of our bullshit. So <laughs> yes. shout out, shout out to the squad. Shout out to Eli Thank being you. back. Eli, yes. Eli is back. Hey, Eli. Uh, Eli has had a rough time recently, and um, just keep him in your thoughts. He's He's, he's crawling back out, but we're, we've got him back on the show. Um, and hopefully next week we'll have a very special episode for you. I don't think it's been fully confirmed yet, but you guys will see. It, it, it's it's going to be a good one. You might actually, like, I don't think I'm going to get to stream it. I don't think I'm that ambitious enough yet because um, this is, like, mm. this is, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a big one. And I don't want to muck it up, so uh, it might just be an audio. But, yeah. Hopefully we'll have a, a good uh, group episode uh, for you guys next week. So we are Battleground Podcast on Instagram and Battleground IHR on Twitter. Um, that's all I got, guys. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you, Aaliyah. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. You guys uh, are really good. 
Oh, you're amazing. Uh, final <laughs> shout out to to my boys at Tiger Driver who just got us to nineteen hundred dollars uh, with a fifty dollar donation. Um, yes. Please go support Tiger Driver. Okay. They oh, put yeah. out some sick playlists. They've got some sick write ups. Incredible merch. I've got my sticker right here in my water bottle. Oh, um, I love it. Yeah, please go support them. They're doing all. Uh, they're all doing all kinds of good shit. Chris, just let just let me. This is my. Sh- <laughs> this is our show. This is Don't my show. It. I'm talking. Up, Chris, please go. <laughs> please go support Tiger Driver. They're supporting us. So. Yes. We support each other. It's, it's like, it's like, we hey. do. That's just what we do. So, guys, I'm it going is to. Uh, for you, so you guys can totally buy that. It's a freaking amazing. So, it's coming next month. So, dude, the merch. Mm. I haven't bought any yet because <laughs> so I have money. Everything want to be sold out, but. I have. <laughs> We'll talk about all the fucking merch that I've bought within the past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I am going to put up the BRB screen and give us a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. Please stick around yeah. for some shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. We are...
smells so much. We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Show us the beans. Show us, Show the, beans. us the beans. Show us the beans. Show there us the beans. Show us the beans. Show us the beans. Mr. Feel. Is this what you want? Hello, sir. Oh, BB Yoba donated $50. Yes. We're at nineteen fifty. Oh my gosh. Say so thank close. you, baby Yoba. That, that's Lauren. That's Lauren oh. Moran's alter ego is BB Yoba. Oh, oh. Lauren. Aaron Moran. just calls her Yoda. He's like, oh, Yoda? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Is what? We ain't got enough questions, y'all. Keep them rolling. I've only seen yeah. like two. And, Hit us. Um, Hit us with them. Let me, uh, I've got, I know I've got a, uh, dad joke oh, to tell i always have so many questions i have so many stories <laughs> we don't want to turn this into a disney podcast oh, we're about to we're about to no oh, this yay. is this is a free-for-all we talk about whatever we need to talk about it doesn't matter what it is we just we just sit here and we just chill and oh mm -hmm. we crack up another truly hard Ooh. seltzer with a hint of wild berry you know what? Ooh. Ooh. Yep, I see it now. Can you see it? Is it in focus? <laughs> is it in focus? There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wait until oh, Ali gets back to do the dodge. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the, the, weekend, the weekend is starting early. Aaron's been good, and he's not been. He's only been drinking the weekends. And I'm like, oh, I can't make it. I like, I started. It's Friday Eve. <laughs> yeah, it's fr yeah, it's Friday Eve. It's been a long week for it's a lot of us. Every day is my weekend right now until I get a drop. Right. Schmoms is in the chat. What, mod. Mod alert. Mod alert. Y'all be <laughs> respectful. We got two mods in the chat. Two Whoa. mods in the chat. Okay, now uh, now that Aaliyah is back, I will um, I'll tell my dad joke. Let me find a real. Uh... Can I share something with you? Yeah, tell us, moms. What's going yeah. on? That gives me a second to find a good one. <laughs> I'm choosy about my dad joke. Oh, let's see. Oh, that one's weird. Some of these are weird too. Moms, what you got to say? Spit it out. <laughs> I don't know what weird shit he's about to say. Okay. I've got a dad joke, but I feel like I want to give Pat his, his uh, stage for a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hopefully he's just about to say, fuck 12. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna give him two more seconds to get out his, <laughs> it's a lot. Get out his words. <laughs> or I'm gonna steal the stage. All right, you snooze, you lose. We'll come back to it. What do you call a factory <laughs> that sells passable products? Mm, what? Oh, a that's right. <laughs> I was like, damn, Sorry. you you ain't even. <laughs> You didn't even give me. You didn't even I know, got I, know. Like, oh. I got so excited. <laughs> All right. Once again, okay. what do you call a factory that sells passable products? A satisfactory. <laughs> okay. Oh. That was, that was fake as fuck, too. <laughs> I'm like, that was good. I'm like, the world is burning. Let's tell a dad joke. <laughs> hey, did you hear about the peanut? That was Aaliyah. Oh, what was Aaron saying? I got one for you. A peanut? Aaliyah just got us to $2,000. $2,050. Oh, oh my thank gosh. Thank you. Thank oh. you so much. That's so great. I can't, I mean, I set the goal for $100 because I didn't know what was, like, even feasible. 
and we just raised two two thousand dollars but like man this isn't about me like it's it's not about me it's about the fact that like we've got some fucking awesome people in this community a lot of whom like i barely know and i you know was lucky enough to be able to grab alex and sean for sunday and you for today and we just wanted to make sure that we used our platform the best that we could and it went so much bigger than i expected and i'm just thankful it really like it has to fucking give you hope that there's fucking like there's good fucking people in the world like yeah we just have we have to fight and we have to fight together that's so fucking important oh shit j rose is here j rose Pat, Pat never told me what he was, what he was going to say. I said, I said, he's, he going to say fuck 12. And he said, been saying that girl, I'm on mobile. I'm on mobile. <laughs> is that what you had to say? <laughs> is that what you had to go? Like, is that, is that all? Dude, fucking Jay Rose is here. Oh shit. I just know. We're gonna get Jay. I mean, we're gonna get Jay Rose in here on two, two, especially like, especially this month because I want like this week, and I already love him. So I hope he wants to be. Listen, I like, I watched this kid like creepily from the shadows ever since he started um, like working with uh, Southern Underground Pro, my local promotion, Mm -hmm. and just like he fucking like runs around like a crazy person and like i've like watched him work so hard and he's just always like i don't know if we've ever like spoken more than a couple of times like we're very much strangers but like i watch him online he's somebody that i like fucking look up to and admire and like i just think he's a really fucking he he's a very genuine person so thank you i'm really happy you're here um i just met him this week and i was just like well now we have to be it's just like i mean i like i am if you don't i'm gonna cry yeah like i am fucking 32 years old and this sounds like such like an old person thing to say but to to see younger people because like i'm from a very very small east tennessee town where like it was white people all the time like very rare but my parents didn't raise me like very like raised me very neutral and just like everybody around me was very neutral and like my generation like everybody just didn't talk about it and the younger generations now are not afraid to fucking talk about it and people Mm -hmm. like Aaliyah and people like fucking Chris and to see like younger people even if it's just by like you know five or six years I just think that it's it gives it gives me hope like 32 is not young um i mean i just my generation my generation no matter how far away we are like my generation like are the first i feel like we were the first people to like kind of toe that line but everybody just and you guys inspire us to fight and stand up and support you and I mean, I've, I've told you this. Like, I do this shit for you, man. Like, I do it for all of these people in this fucking community that I've met that have been so fucking kind to me. Like, we just have to, we have to fucking hold hands and stay together. It's just... Absolutely. Yeah, we hold yeah. we always hold hands, don't we? <laughs> you get me and Aaliyah in a room, and it's like me and Alex. Like we don't let go of each other. Like <laughs> she is like the light of my fucking life. And I do like I oh, I, I call her my daughter, but like I do feel like I feel like she's like I want to mother her, <laughs> and I want to make sure like. I mean, I want to make sure all of my friends succeed, but, like, look at how fucking wholesome that face is. Like, how can you not just want to fucking, like, scoop her up (laughs) and, like, strap her on your back and carry her around? (laughs) 
I just love like, her so kindred much. Spirits, we are. Like, we really are. Like, y'all are very much alike. We, we and are. I love that. <laughs> we are. We're. Me and Kayla sitting in the freaking middle of Cobra <laughs> arcade, sitting next to each other. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, oh my oh, god, I love, I love it. <laughs> 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 um, Pat, no, I did not see a wall of text. I only saw that you were so kind to gift that fucking sub. Um, so thank you. Holy shit. Um, Chris was twerking. <laughs> I whispered it. Chris was twerking. Um, <laughs> uh, but I do, I do have to tell another dad joke. Mm. Okay. Hold on just a second. Ready? Ready for it. it. <laughs> okay i have a pat i got i got um i got what you said do you want me i'm happy to read this or show this on screen um so he's i mean he just like you're supremely, I don't know what is so long, but it's just like really sweet. Um, I got stacked. Okay, hold on. I got it. I got everybody's redeeming so much at one time. I gotta, so I gotta show me the beans and another dad joke. So let's just do them right. both at the same time. Yes, please. Okay. Where's that baby boy? Oh my gosh. I just love how he emerges. So, oh my gosh, you child. He's so fat. He's a child. He's so fat. Okay, so here's the beans. <laughs> and here's the joke. All right. I was interrogated over the theft of a cheese toasty. Man, they really grilled me. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm Dude, I love dad jokes. Oh, I'm yeah. here for it. Dude, I... I don't think well, Ali, I don't remember if you were on the stream where I explained why I did the dad why I did the dad jokes is because me and Aaron went to um how do I unsub after that joke? You don't. You're fucking oh, no. stuck oh, here. No. <laughs> um so me and Aaron were in uh fucking Home Depot and this random guy that worked there came and handed me a whole like two page list of dad jokes and told us and like started telling us dad jokes for no reason and Aaron's like okay this is weird and I'm fucking losing my mind I'm like crying laughing because I there's nothing I love more than a good fucking dad joke oh yeah like that's just my sense of humor like I just like I have a stupid fucking sense of humor so I was like fuck it Let's just tell everybody loves love a good it. dad joke. Everybody I love loves. it. Um, like you always just told dad jokes, and I was just like, "Well, that's fine." Um, look at that you. baby Phil. I know. <laughs> My goodness, bring Phil back. Okay, give me just. I know. Anything for Lauren. For Lauren. Hey, listen, it's Lauren. It's Lauren Moran's birthday tomorrow. <gasps> oh, happy early birthday, Lauren Moran. Do I look like Phil? Mm. That baby. This is when we say, do we look like Phil? <laughs> he's a Dude, baby he's so boy. heavy. He's so <laughs> heavy. God. I loved him all swaddled earlier today. Oh, yeah. He posted on Twitter. Yeah, oh, my gosh. I, uh, that was Aaron. We have uh, bookshelves right here, and there's he He always gets Phil. Like, he'll, like, <laughs> zoom in through the opening in the bookshelf just to get Phil. So I'm oh just like, gosh. everybody has to... Everybody he was has living his best life. <laughs> oh man! All right, we've got a couple of questions. Y'all are just fucking all over the place tonight, screaming random Goat. things. Um, <laughs> so let me see if I can get back to these questions. I think that we all got kind of off track. Um, I did see a very long stream of um, Disney uh, questions. Disney questions. Um, so, and I think that was actually oh, cool. I don't know if that was the first one, so if I missed one, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Lauren wants to know your top three Disney rides. Just uh, rattle these off. I like, love don't it. we? We don't have to make it a big long thing. Like, you don't have to explain uh, it, even though I really want you to. <laughs> I know. I'm into it. Top three 
Off the top of my head, number one, Flight of Passage. Number two, yes. Everest. Number three, Mind Train. That's it. <laughs> Flight of Passage is a very beautiful ride. Expedition Everest deals with my uh, my home park in the Animal Kingdom. When I, I was going to say Animal Kingdom with the and, Yeti. Um, the Mind is just a very magical experience as a child riding through that ride. The the Everest one was trippy because there's a <laughs> point where you go backwards. <laughs> that threw me for a loop. <laughs> uh, what was the other one? Top three meet and greets. Ooh. Okay. My top three meet and greets. My number one is definitely meeting Max. Um, Max is one of uh, this movie is definitely one of my favorite Disney movies. So and Max is a very rare character to meet in the park. So when I went to uh, Mickey's Halloween party at Disneyland. We met him, and this is my mm. lost dream forever. <laughs> Never yeah, too. Mexico Donald. Uh, I swear, not being racist. Like he's labeled Mexico Donald because he's in the Mexican pavilion at Epcot. Um, he's fantastic. I absolutely love meeting Mexico Donald and meeting Oogie Boogie at the uh, Disney College program which is formal. Uh, oh my gosh! A fantastic experience. Even though he didn't talk, he was. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's awesome. I really just pulled him the entire time. <laughs> so, yeah, those are my that, top three meetings. That Oogie Boogie energy. That's that something to say. Yeah, Oogie Boogie and, um, yeah, the peanut at the I love end. that. Yes. The march against, uh, Aaron has something no. to say. No, I don't. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> yes, he has, he has something no, to don't. say. <laughs> you don't. Hey, Aaron. He doesn't want to do it now. Oh. I'm not, oh. <laughs> well, if you say it to me, then you say it to everybody right now. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Hit us with it, Aaron. No. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. He he just wanted he likes to tell jokes and I want to make sure that uh, I have control of my own channel and he doesn't tell his jokes and steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> I should not be drinking truly this late at night. I have totally uh, lost. Uh, Pat, I've tried to um, I have tried to get what you said in the chat, but you wrote a novel. So if you want me to bring it up on screen, I will bring it up on screen uh, for everybody to see. But he said some very nice things. It's just super, super long. And I may have had one too many seltzers to try and read that. <laughs> um, just know that he says really nice things. Um, oh. It's not, it's not that late. <laughs> Listen. Oh my God. I'm supposed to be in bed. That's uh, with the truth bombs, even for Mamma. Bro, we are all so <laughs> like, listen, like I was so excited to have Lee on here, but like you just like, I feel like we're all very much in that space. We're like, God, can I do this? Oh, like, yeah. can I do this? Can I like get and hang out with people? And mm -hmm. apparently, yes, we can because Stephen McCash is here. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Our good friend Steven has joined us. That means also his beautiful Hi. wife Heather is here. Hello, my Hi, angels. Friends. Hello, my angels. Um, <laughs> uh, Kenneth has the floor. No. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we um, just, <sighs> I don't even know what to say. It's just been a long, very, very long uh week since yeah. since last like I feel like everything like really popped off like last weekend like it's already yeah. been a week it's already been a week that all yeah. of this stuff like like it's I can't and I can't concentrate <sighs> like I can't even like form like full sentences I do want to say that um Super thankful for you and Alex and how y'all have been so vocal on social media because I don't like have the words. I'm trying to like 
educate myself and whatnot, you know. And I, so. like, I, the only thing that I can say is, like, like, Aaliyah's, like, literally, like, why I'm doing this. Like, I didn't, I didn't grow up with black friends. Like, I never, I never really, I mean, I definitely experienced racism, like, like, I've seen it. Um, my, like I said, like, my parents raised me very, like, I, my parents just raised me to love people. Like, she, like, they just, they never, but they never taught me about how things really were. And it's just, like, they don't teach you that stuff in school. Like, I knew it was wrong. Um, but it was very much, like, middle class, quiet white person. Too mm. afraid to speak up. And I just, I regret, I'm not going to sit here and like wallow in my own regret because it's not about that. I have to make up for what I didn't contribute before. And I have so many people that I love in my life that I would fucking fight for and I am fighting for. And it's just like, it just, it will never, it will never be enough. Like, just know that like. I will never, I will never fucking quit. Like, I've never been so fucking sick in my life. And it's just, but it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about doing what's right and everybody fucking banding together. But we're fucking changing things, guys. Like, it's wild. we're in the middle <laughs> of history. We're in the middle of mm -hmm. fucking history. And two weeks ago... I would have been afraid to have this conversation on my Twitch stream. It's like, I, I just am very, I've always been very non-confrontational. I think that's about, like, that's been my experiences. I'm just a very non con I hate conflict. I have fucking anxiety. And I think that that's another, you know, another reason why, like, I just never spoke up. And... I don't know. It's just this this whole experience is changing a lot of people's lives and it needs to be for the better and that's what we need to concentrate mm -hmm. on is we don't need to sit and figure out, I mean, acknowledge how we got here, but we have to continue the fight on what to do to fix it. That's the most important thing is to not give up and to not stay quiet. Like we have to if things are going to happen... I mean, we've got another fucking four months of this shit. <laughs> yeah. We have four months left to fight. And we got to keep fucking doing it. Like... So... <laughs> yeah, we don't... We don't have a choice anymore. I mean... And, and to have... And to have... To have had a choice to not fight before... Is what privilege is about. Like, I can turn it off if I want to. I read something like that today on Twitter. I think maybe Vanessa pointed it, it uh, posted it. Is something about like being able to say, "I'm gonna turn off my phone and I'm not gonna think about it." That's a privilege. It's true. And that's a lot like shit people don't re like doesn't realize is yeah. to even be able to remove yourself from the situation. That's what the privilege is about. So we. Oh, we need yeah. to stop removing ourselves. We mm -hmm. need to we need to be in the situation if anything is going to change. So that's it. That's it. I already went on my little spiel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> no, everything is definitely true. Like I said, I'm very grateful to have allies with you. Uh, growing up, even though I grew up in a white suburban neighborhood, so it wasn't super extreme. I did experience racism a lot, even when I didn't know I was. So, um, just getting away from that and seeing where I felt like I had to conform, you know, and I don't have to do that anymore. It's a choice of mine because it doesn't matter what I do, it's still my skin color, you know what I mean? So, it's better to just fight and fight for normalcy rather than trying to conform to anything because clearly, I tried that shit didn't work. So, but no, this is like, I shouldn't have to change, you know, so, and I'm glad that everybody is starting to open up and see that. It's like, of course, everybody has to change, but like, 
I, I can't change my skin tone rather than like white people or other nationalities changing their behaviors. Yeah. So it's very fair. And Elena, I think it's really great that you're, you know, you're making right. sure that you, that you're educating yourself. And I think that that's honestly, as you know, as allies, we have to make sure that we're educating people and we're, Absolutely. And we're yeah. having the hard conversations. And that's why, like, I just, I don't even want to post anything like personal, like, I just can't, like, I feel like I, it's it's not fair to talk about anything else right now. Yeah. It's just not fair to me, you know? Like, it's not... Dude, yeah. Lauren, absolutely. Battle's here! <laughs> hey, Battle! Yay! Hey. <laughs> and let me tell you, I am... And Lena, I'm sure you feel the same. I am so thankful to have two partners on our podcast because we are four white oh, people. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. that have, are very much like in tune with the views and, mm -hmm. you know, we're making sh battle in Eli. Like I'm so proud of them for speaking up and, and we want to make sure that we use our platform because it's not yeah. fair to try and grow a platform. Like that's why I'm just like, every time, like if somebody subs to me, I'm like, please don't like it. It's no, fucking it's like, like I just can't. I can't. Like it's not I I don't want to be acknowledged right now. I want people like Aaliyah to be acknowledged. And it's so it's so awful to me that and this is this is my own shame too is it, that it had to get this bad for a lot of us to fucking stand up and fight. Yeah. And I'm not going to sit on my regret, but I just, I wish that we'd done something sooner and it's just fucking, but what's important is what's happening right now and mm -hmm. that the right people are standing up and that we are being peaceful and that we've got so many people using their voice, no matter how large or how small to actually fucking do something. <laughs> like yeah. people are doing, it's just, it's fucking We're blowing my mind. It. It's yeah. It's blowing my mind. Pretty amazing. And mm -hmm. um, they had one tonight in Nashville. We went to the one last weekend, and they had one tonight in Nashville, and the crowd was even bigger. Mm -hmm. And awesome. <sighs> yeah, I saw some pics. Pretty yeah. proud. Yeah, it's just yeah. I you you understand so living in the like living in the South is a whole different. It's a whole. It's different a ball. whole different story here. Yeah. Um, like I said, I've talked to the rest of the left. Like, I have made the choice not to go out and protest. I have clearly still donating and spreading awareness, but I have not gone out and protest. My anxiety is way too big for me to go out there. I wouldn't be a safe, I would be a safety hazard to myself and those around me, especially in that high risk situation. So, for those who do have the strength to go out and protest, I commend you and I'm so proud of you and I thank you. And forever grateful for you. Like I said, it sucks that I did have guilt, but just as a black person, we're not going out there. And I, I had a conversation with the girls about it. Like, like, I feel like I'm not doing anything as a black person because I'm not going out there. But I just know that my mental capacity cannot handle being almost the you know? So just, I just wanted to shout out everybody who has come out there, especially if they are black. You know, so like, thank you for going out there. I hate to feel like I'm making excuses, but I can't do it. But I, 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 I've battled it. I've gotten my car and went to drive sometimes to some protests that happen in my local neighborhood, and I just, I, I can't, you know. So, it, and like I said, I don't ever want to put my safety or anybody else's safety in danger if my anxiety raises so high to a point where it, it's bad. So yeah. definitely go out and protest. You're making a change. I'm definitely a support system. I'm always there to talk to people. I'm constantly throwing money to whatever, clearly. <laughs> like I just gave $100 <laughs> to the Minnesota Fund. I'm throwing money to donate and spread awareness as much as I can. And we need those people to donate, bail these people out, support, send 
money for supplies for these protesters yeah. that are going out there. Unfortunately, money is the absolute best thing that these organizations can have right now. Yes. And I mean, getting out there and lending your voice, and not everybody can donate, and that's understandable, and that is no one's fault. Yes. But get, getting out there and getting in the streets and lending your voice is... It's great, it's good, and it's important, and it's what needs to happen. But if you can't, especially, I mean, I think we had this conversation um, on the stream on Sunday. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Exactly. Yeah. And if you are have an immune deficiency, if you have mental illness, mental, I mean, taking care of your mental health right now is honestly the best thing that we can possibly do because exactly. we, yeah. we've got four months left to fight. And if we get gassed out right now, then everything's just going to go back to the way it was or worse. And we have to take care of ourselves while we fight because if we don't, we're going to get fucking gassed out and we're going to lose it. And everybody's going to get quiet yeah. And then nothing's going to happen. Right. And then what was all that. of this for? Like, mm -hmm. did everybody just want to get a fucking pat on the back for donating a couple of fucking dollars? Like, I just, I, it's so important. Somebody said earlier, yeah, keep the foot on the gas. Keep yep. the foot on the gas. There are different lanes to fight in, but whatever lane you choose, keep fucking going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And. Absolutely. It's just, you have to find that that borderline for literally letting it fucking consume you. If it's distracting you, then good. Let yes. it fucking distract yeah. you. But you have to take care of yourself. Because you can't fight this fight if you're fucking down, if you're fucking mm -hmm. feeling out, if you're not taking care of yourself. Like, we have to be strong to fucking get through this. It's going to be fucking hell, man. Like, oh, it's going to be right, fucking man. hell. I mean, we're already, yeah. And we went in there in, in, in the span of two weeks. So imagine the fucking, you know, what, you know, what else is going to happen? What's happening right now? Like, I haven't, I haven't looked at my phone in an hour and a half. And, like, you're just, you get afraid to look and see what's going on. And, yeah, you know. These, these organizations who get out there and they can actually fucking make a difference, we have to support them. Like, that's what this is about. Yes. We can't do this shit without money, unfortunately. That's, unfortunately. The, that's the hard realization is that, you know, these organizations, nothing is free. Like, them running these organizations, like these charities, it's still not free. It's these people's, you know, it's their time. It's people working, you know... A full-time job and doing this shit on the side it's people that have lost their job because of the pandemic so like you have to support them you know with that's the most important thing because we, we just that's just the fucking society that we live in you mm -hmm. can't do anything if you don't have money and it's just it all and it just links to everything else being a fucking psycho like cycle if you don't bail them out of jail, they're gonna stay there. And they're gonna get out. And and even like, like it's just it's just fucked. It's just fucked. And we have to make it not fucked. Like we have to find ways, and we have to be present in 2020, and we have to fight this with. I mean everything we have to we have to give them everything <laughs> it's not you know one or the other it's fucking all of it right now yeah. it's fucking wild shit mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean you guys have seen like I feel like a, I feel like a totally different person so fucked right now I feel like a totally different person from all of this like, Which is awesome. I've went from non, like, running from confrontation where, like, I'm not scared to fucking tell anybody about themselves. About themselves, yes. That's like, amazing. come <laughs> to me, come to me, and I'm going to tell you in the most respectful manner while you're a piece of shit. Yes. But <laughs> I'm going to help you at the same time. 
but I'm going to help you, and we're going to get through this together, and if you don't want to listen, then bye. But, like, you know me. Like, I'm, like, the most docile mm -hmm. person ever. Ever. <laughs> and, like, I'm fucking fired up. The Leo in me is coming out. Like, that <laughs> cusp, that cusp sign is coming out, and I'm just ready to go. Just I ready to it. fight everybody. <laughs> <sighs> and that truly still yeah, truly <laughs> hard seltzer. Truly is fire. Well, I think I, I don't know, I think white claw's better. It is. As someone who's I don't know what it is about it. It's just not not hitting. All right, guys, the the chat is very, very quiet, and yeah. I think that that's a problem. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna need you guys to speak the fuck up. Uh, T Money Belvedere just followed. Thank Hello. you. I'm sorry Hello. that my uh, my alerts are not up. I actually didn't realize that my alert box wasn't up. Um, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, but welcome, welcome. Um, another, another D Town yeah. Mike seventy nine. Thank you for following. Welcome Hello. to our Welcome. live episode of Bells of the Brawl. Lauren, it's okay. <laughs> I'm sure you're it's working on noises. something beautiful. Um, loud beans, noises. Beans, 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 beans. There he is. Do I look like Phil? Oh my gosh, you little baby. <laughs> Oh man, beans! I love him so much. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> how is every? I mean, okay. how how is everybody taking care of themselves? Like, what are yeah, you doing to nice. to like preserve preserve yourself right now? Because I really like. I think that's a conversation oh, that is shit. so fucking important. Like, oh, I don't yeah. think people realize. Like, everybody's so focused on fighting, but like, if you do not take a step back. And take and and, and like take years. you you will break, man. You'll fucking break. Yeah. Um, God damn it! I got another dad <laughs> joke. Um, so tell me, yeah, I'll I'll get to the dad joke. You guys tell me, what have you been doing? How are you taking care of yourself? Oh, let me think. I, I'll be honest with you. I've been riding my bike a lot more, which seems crazy, but just to get out in nature, man. It just yeah. it just feels good. Just Dude, like yeah. hear the birds singing, just breathe air. Meditations, I highly recommend if no one's doing those, I'm at least 10 minutes. I'm too to meditate. Like, Man, it's hard. I'm so... My mind is too much. Yeah, it's I like... I have the guided, the guided meditations. <laughs> yeah. I know. I always imagine, like, you know, when thoughts come in, they're like, you know, like ocean waves. They come in, and I just tell myself thoughts, and then they go away. But... That's been helping. Um, I, yeah, that and bubble baths. Yes. So that, that's all I got. <laughs> yes, yes. What about you, Aaliyah? What you been doing? Like I said, I got back into the gym, which is definitely helping with mental health a lot. Um, I used to go on walks with my boyfriend and his dog, but then I started seeing tarantulas and snakes. And <gasps> Stop. Yeah, and also I have really bad allergies. Like, uh, uh, where were you? Grass. I'm in Dallas. You're. I'm it, never going. I'm <laughs> never visiting. <laughs> Frisco. It is like this little nature park that he walks through, and I used to go and walk with him in. Then he pointed out a tarantula, and then he just took a picture of a snake. The no. snake and sent it to me, and I said, oh. No. I we had two snakes in our front yard today. <gasps> like, Ooh. in the middle of my work day, our no. neighbor, two doors down, <laughs> who's like an older lady, comes and no. knocks on our door. And there are two snakes outside. There's literally one on the left and one on the right. <gasps> and me and Aaron love snakes. Like, we don't have a problem with snakes. And Aaron's yeah. like... He's like, no, it's fine. They're not poisonous. And I'm like, cool. Let me look at them. And this lady's freaking the fuck out. And she's like losing her mind. And Erin was out there for like 45 minutes because she would not calm down until oh she saw Erin pick up that snake and go put it in the creek. <laughs> Stop. 
Yeah, so like this park right. literally has everything. They have, yeah, tarantulas. Fuck those. Um, <laughs> uh, snakes. There's a, tur there's a lake in the middle of the park, so like turtles sometimes get away from the lake. So we'll sometimes see turtles like trying to make it to the sunlight and they walk super slow and it's really cute. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> That's that I do love. But then, um, uh, fresh cut grass again kills me, and you know it's hard to keep it up to you. So every time I go outside, uh, someone's cutting their grass right now because it's summer, and uh, I'm dying. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Aaron's back here really quick. He's uh, watching Jushin Thunder Liger. Who is he wrestling? Braun Brian Pelman. Oh, uh, versus. Uh, uh, Flying Brian Pillman. Oh wow! Oh cool. my God! He's been studying, so I turned about, around and I just saw Jushin Liger. And actually, nice. wrestling was he still just doing? Um, oh yeah. Nitro. Yeah, first episode of Nitro, absolutely. Man. First match of Nitro. That's a heater. <laughs> Aaron said it's all right. It's a little sloppy. <laughs> yeah, is he still gonna train to be a ref? Yeah, he is. He had um he had training last week. That's awesome. He's doing a great job. Everybody's saying that he's really good at it. Yay. My good friend Owen, who's usually in here, he might be working tonight. Uh, he trains with him, and he's also our neighbor. So I believe that uh, he'll be joining me on stream soon. What? He doesn't train. Was well, he a trainer? Honor? Yes. Was he the guy at Ring of Honor? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we went, Lena and me went to Ring of Honor, and our um, mine and Aaron's neighbor, Owen, was working the event as, like, ring security. So, like, he, like, you know, got all the shit out of the ring, changed the ring and shit like that. And we managed to be right behind him, and I was so fucking pumped to see him. I was like, that's my neighbor. That's my neighbor. That's my friend. And I was being was like a fucking so idiot, cool. like normal. But I wanted to see if I could make him crack, and he never cracked. Yeah. Nope. I was just like, there he is, there he is. Pro fish. Yeah. He was taking off the security. I'm like, I can't fucking. He said he <laughs> he said he almost lost it like one time. And I was like, all right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. I think actually we did have another question from earlier. Um, someone asked what your uh, top three favorite storylines were. Oh, yeah. I believe. Oh, uh, uh, well, Randall said top five. But let's, yeah, I mean, if you Most do how many you want. So, number one, I always versus Undertaker. That is the pinnacle of storytelling ever. It was a very, very, very long storyline, and it definitely um, developed Randy Orton as a full character. We've seen him at his peak, and we've seen him at his most vulnerable. You know, like, he was the legend killer back then. And the only legend that he didn't kill was the Undertaker. So he went through hell and high water to try to get Undertaker down. And once he thought that he did, Taker came back a freaking Survivor Series and kicked down that casket door and scared the <laughs> shit out of Randy. And, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. and it's so crazy because Randy Orton was just so cocky back then. It was right after his Evolution run. He was dropped from Evolution and everything. And he was a legend killer. So he was like, I can meet anybody. And Undertaker said, screw you. So yes. <laughs> he that Armageddon. And it was in the Hell of a Sun match. And it was fantastic. So that is my number one because it shows Randy Orton's character development. He goes from being super cocky to being extremely vulnerable. And you see him, you see his desperation in the storyline. Like when Undertaker, I remember the promo, the, the SmackDown where Undertaker announces the Hell in a Cell match, and he's, like, in the middle of the ring, broken down, breaking down, crying, because he's so scared, and he doesn't know what to do, and how to defeat the Undertaker, and eventually he loses at Armageddon, because he cannot defeat the dead man, because he's not dead. All right, so number two nice. is very controversial. It's really fucked up. <laughs> it's really <laughs> fucked up. I'm not going to lie. I hate, saying, I hate saying this, but it's uh, Kurt Angle versus Booker T at Judgment Day for Charmel, where Kurt Angle is just completely insane and tries to sleep with Charmel. 
I don't know why I love this storyline. <laughs> <laughs> resonated with me all my life. I think I it's, love it. it's so insane. I love Kurt during this time because he's a complete monster. Like, everybody knows that Kurt Angle is definitely in my top three. Bottom line. So, um, just to see him like that, it, it shows that Charmel, she, she came in as a manager for Booker. She's another one. She's another uh, manager that I really look up to. And she's black, so it's, like, awesome. Um, it was just, it was just so insane. Um, it was only for that Judgment Day pay-per-view. Booker T cost Kurt Angle a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. He went psycho. <laughs> so <laughs> he was like, I want to have sex with your wife. He kept harassing her. He handcuffed her to the ring. <laughs> how old How old were you when you saw that one? When I saw that? That was like 2005. So I was... Yeah, you were a baby. So like you're probably baby. like, oh my God, this is like the most dramatic <laughs> thing I've ever seen. It was. That's the most dramatic thing I've ever seen in my life. And like, it, like, it was life. super believable. I mean, it was still, like, kind of believable around that time. So, like, you still, like, kayfabe wasn't fucking dead. <laughs> no. God, the day kayfabe was dead. Uh, well, I think everybody's kayfabe was dead was when Benoit was passed. But, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but both The Undertaker, Randy, and um, Kurt and Booker T, I think it happened around the same time. Um, that same year, 2005. Um, my third is, is... I have to think about that one. See, I'm not good with stuff like this. Like, if I feel, like, very, like, still like a baby, like a wrestling baby, because if somebody asks me this, like, I feel like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know. know. Like, I, I just... You know? I've never been able to retain that kind of information. Like, I mean... Well, these things were Go so figure, but like, you know. dramatic and traumatizing. <laughs> that but I also didn't grow up with it. So, like, yeah. that wasn't, like, something I experienced when it happened. That's um, true. I mean, yeah, I mean, I barely remember. I mean, I barely remember storylines. Like, I just, I feel like I, I started, when I started watching wrestling, I paid attention to the drama, and then I just, like, kind of, like, gave up on caring about the storyline, because I was just, like, very confused half the time. <laughs> and I would, like, fall out, and then fall back in, and, like, I don't know. I just, I honestly, like, where are my brain cells anyways? I'm really trying to think of a third one. Like, I, I love wrestling a lot, but, um, it's really, it was really, really, really I'm trying to dig deep something that I really, really, really love. I'm trying to think more modern time. Um, it wasn't really a storyline, but I do love the build up to this match. Uh, it is one of my favorite matches. It's definitely in my top ten. Alistair Black versus Velveteen Dream at War Games 2018. God, like, that, that was is great. the pinnacle of really good, quick, efficient storytelling, which led to a really big. And it was simple too. Like simple. all it was about was him saying his it's name weird. and like showing him respect. And that like, I'm glad that you. I almost forgot about that. Like seriously, mm -hmm. it was so simple. It was captivating at the same time because it was just you didn't have to think about it. I remember it because I wasn't watching NXT then. Like that was kind of when I was kind of not really fizzling out of wrestling. I was still heavily involved in the community. But I wasn't really watching NXT. Like, I just didn't really have time for it. So, I watched War Games just on a random day. Like, I was just watching War Games. And um, I seen the match. And I was just like, I seen the vignette for the match before it came on. And I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> like, this is amazing. I love Velveteen. I love Alistair. Like, I knew him as Tommy End. I hadn't really seen him as Alistair Black yet, but I did know who Tommy End was. Oh, yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh. Uh, I was like, oh, that's freaking Patrick from freaking Tough Enough, which is also an amazing time in wrestling history, but we're not going to talk about that yet. Um, I was just like, okay. I knew who they were. Like, I've heard their names and I've seen them, but it was the first time I ever seen Nussle. I've seen the vignette. I thought it was a cool thing. And then the match was just a masterpiece. It was a perfect way to start. Even though they didn't start War Games that pay-per-view, it was like they're the ones who really kicked it off. Um, and yeah, I would say those are my my top three at the moment. I'll really have to dig deep in wrestling, but like those are the three that if you ask me, those are the ones that like, I really 
gun for it. I'm a really weird wrestling fan. I like all the really dirty, grimy <laughs> storylines. <and> stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm here here for it. But it's, it's, we always have the same conversation with each of our guests, too, is like, we all came into wrestling in different ways in different times. And Mm -hmm. it's such a, it opens such a wide perspective on the business. Because, like, I mean, knowing the history is important, but, like, also being in tune with current product is important. Speaking Mm -hmm. of, let's just, does anybody want to talk about the tea? Do we want to, like, touch on what's going on in, like, the wrestling community as far as, like, statements? Or do we want to just leave that? Um, I think that uh, that one dude from Forgotten Son really Oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. Uh, He's nasty. person who was like, I really don't know who you are. And Ross was like, who are you? (laughs) Guys, really quick, really quick, really quick. So much. Aaliyah, we got a raid. We got a raid um, from Calypso426. My uh-huh. alert box is messed up, but I want to stop because this is my first raid. Oh, so right. thank you so much. Um, welcome to the Bells of the Brawl uh, podcast. Hi. We're kind of like in our more unprofessional uh, yeah, <laughs> portion. Right Oh, so thank you. Oh my God, um, guys, Holy I don't shit. have I don't have emotes yet, but just throw up the most positive emote that you can. Thank what, you. What? Um, I'm gonna go with cranberry. Um, <laughs> so thank you. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. Um, so welcome. Uh, we're talking about wrestling. We're talking about. Um, the forgotten sons that everybody the fucking oh, Jackson whatever uh, whatever Nasty. bullshit so we're yeah I mean we're this is a safe space this is a positive space we're gonna talk about shit that's going on hot off the press hot off the press that's right. that's um, right. <laughs> okay <laughs> raise your hand if you love and adore the piece of shit that is AJ Gray oh AJ <laughs> we love him <laughs> He's a piece of shit, though, (laughs) and he will tell you that. So, um, I'm not sure who this is, but let me read this. Let me do this dramatic reading of this tweet. All right. At Rich Homie Juice called Tammy Sitch the nut rag of the 90s, and I can't (laughs) stop thinking about how fucking incredible that was. And that was at the real underscore Kirk. (laughs) Thank you, Aaron, for the tweet of the night. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, man. Yeah, that was, yeah, man. Like, She's trash. dude, everything's just like. Everybody's showing their true colors. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And let me tell you, like, as a person that, like, I know people, man. Like, when you're a cancer and you're as empathetic as we are, like, you know you know people and you know you know people and you know who they are and you know what they fucking show you and let me tell you half of this shit does not surprise me absolutely not no that's why i'm not outraged like everybody else is on social media i'm like well signs yeah everybody's there. snitching on themselves is what aaron said <laughs> um oh, yeah. that's true oh sweet uh welcome to Ray's lighting um who is new here and said that they do lighting for wrestling events on the northeast coast that's Very amazing. cool. Nice to meet you. Welcome. We are Is there um folders or anything there? My lighting. Yeah, yeah right. right yeah. We've got oh, promotions in ten well, we had promotions. <laughs> None of them are running within the pandemic, but we've got promotions um, in Tennessee. We got promotions yeah. in Dallas. We got yeah, we got all kinds of people. So welcome, uh welcome to the stream. We are um talking current events and uh shitty people who are exposing themselves in wrestling Um, (laughs) because because we're not holding back anymore so welcome but this is also a very positive and respectful um community so yeah let's talk about uh the people that are outing themselves (laughs) candace michelle breaks my heart Mm. Oh I, man! I love Candice Michelle. I wanted. I said in my wrestling premiere, I'm going to be the black Candice Michelle. So <laughs> uh, now I could be a better Candice Michelle. Hell yeah! 
So, Hell so yeah. uh, definitely some of my inspiration, as Kayla knows, she's on my Pinterest board. Definitely, you can see some Candace Michelle vibes. Ooh, we have the best <laughs> Pinterest board ever. I'm, I love it. <laughs> it makes my heart so happy. Like, we've got our little, like, we're just Dang. making her look so good, and I'm so ready for it. I love it. Oh, like, shout out to Philly awesome. ECW like country. Leg on, it's over. <laughs> it's coming though. Oh man. But, um, but yeah, Candace Michelle breaks my heart. Yeah. Um, everybody else, I assume anybody in wrestling, like especially if they're white, is Republican until proven otherwise. Yep. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying that all Republicans are. I want to clear that up. I'm not saying that all Republicans are racist. When it comes to political but all parties, racists are Republicans. <laughs> yes, exactly. So when it comes to political parties, um, I believe that the political parties should have stayed with the political views. It shouldn't dive into moral views, and that's where I see the disconnect coming from. You know, mm-hmm. having differences in how we want to run the government is fine and dandy. But when you start integrating people's rights and human rights into your political views, that's when I have a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. for example, the tax problem. The tax percentage is a very valid argument between the two political parties. But black people being in certain areas should not be a valid reason between the political parties. So that's when I say, like, I'm not going to completely, I mean, it could be just me. I don't completely uh, erase the Republican Party. But like Kayla said, not all Republicans are racist, but it just seems like all racists are Republicans. So we're going to talk to you and we're going to (laughs) be, we're going to stop on your fucking head because you shouldn't be that way. But that's just kind of my view. Uh, also, clearly, the Democratic Party is doing some dumb shit too because Joe Biden is our primary. So, so that's what I say. Like both political parties mm-hmm. hate shit to me. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just kind of going with who who the least shitty at this point. <laughs> but both clearly have flaws, and that's my opinion. And if you don't like it, you can suck my dick. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, what John, what did John Boyega said? I said what I said. <laughs> and I said what. I said. Oh man. Oh man. Oh, man. Like, well, guys, we had an anonymous cheer of 100 bits. Thank you so much. Ooh. Um, so, another donation to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. Again, if you've just joined us, we are um, on the tail end of our um, campaign. We hit $2,000. We're at $2,000 uh, or $2,050. So, if you guys have just cho- uh, joined us, uh, we hit a huge, like, I mean, just like a completely mind-blowing milestone. So any revenue that I've received via subs, gifted subs, or bits um, will also be donated. Um, once the campaign's over, I'll, I'll post screenshots of, of the totals. So we're we're over, I mean, I want to say that we're like almost at 2100 uh, with what I've got. So Alex yeah. has dro- uh, been an incredible mod um, and just yes, dropped has. the Tiltify link. The Tiltify link is also um, beneath the video in my panels. Um, if you would like to donate, uh, we are donating to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, as you see at the bottom of our screen, um, helping people get bailed out of jail so they don't go in the shitty justice system uh, for no reason for just standing up for their fucking rights. So, um, yeah. That was the tea. Yeah. That's, and that's that the was tea. the tea. And man, like, <laughs> it's fucking Pride Month with which is like oh, yeah. the first it's the like, first march that I ever went to was a Pride March, and that very much like brought me out of my shell of like standing up for people, and to have those two intersect, I think you know. Obviously, it's unfortunate because Pride is typically a month of celebration, but I think it's also shedding on light, uh, shedding light on the fact, Aaliyah, you mentioned this earlier, is that Black trans women are double targeted. Isolated. Yeah. Double targeted. Not only are they isolated from white people and other cultures, they're isolated from their own community, and it's just. 
I can't imagine having two layers of hatred directed towards you. Yeah. So it's we can't forget about black gay men. We cannot forget about black trans women. We cannot forget about black trans men, black lesbians, black bi- non-binary. I mean, everybody yeah. who has that extra layer of they just have another fucking target on their back just for being who they are. So if you, um, I would like to take a second to ask the chat and to ask you to, um, tell us some like literature or things on Netflix that we can watch. Um, my suggestion since it is pride month is that you watch Paris is burning. Um, it's about, um, the LGBT, uh, LGBT, Q plus uh, culture in New York and voguing and how honestly African Americans shaped a lot of, of gay culture as well. So uh, watch that. Um, that's probably one of my favorite documentaries of all time that kind of hits both yeah. subjects. I've got a whole list of things um, that I've, I've I want to watch and I want to get through when I have the the room in my brain to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to be in a good headspace to teach myself, and I haven't been. And you have to keep that stuff in mind. Is if if you're mm-hmm. gonna sit down and teach yourself, make sure you're not fucking heated and angry. Yeah make sure you're in that space where you're open and you're ready to learn because any, any polarizing emotions, just try to stay, you know, present when you're learning that stuff. If you're distracted, don't watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm really trying to think, I'm sorry. I paused for a minute. I'm really just trying to think. No, you're fine. What I could recommend me. I'm not a TV person. Yeah. I'm really trying to get back into reading. But I'm, I'm really trying to think of... Oh, like, yes. <laughs> Alex said Pose. Watch Pose. Oh, pose. I was okay. Oh, like, uh, let's see educational stuff. But Pose is really... Oh, good. my God. Pose <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> and, and yeah, if you want something that's, like, super, like, modern and new age, mm-hmm. but also, like, if you if you watch Paris... I would suggest watch Paris is Burning first um, mm-hmm. because that's exactly what it's about. It's about the um uh, you know community in new york who started voguing and who started um drag clubs and everything like that but it also talks about people of color so definitely if you want to watch pose watch paris is burning first and then oh mm-hmm. it's it's such a beautiful story because i feel like they just were such an innovative and just like inspiring community and they've influenced so much of culture, but they don't get what they're due from it. No, yeah. they don't. So. She said new queer art tomorrow. Yeah. We all need oh. a good cry. <gasps> Can't wait. Oh, I love them. I, love, I know. I love me some oh JBN. My God. Yes, JBN. God bless. Um, someone <laughs> suggested, uh, Dreed87 suggested, um, if you want to laugh but be informed, watch Black AF on Netflix. Cool. Okay. I'm really trying to think about something. Lauren, yes. Um, the Death and Life of Marsha, Marsha P. Johnson. Um, yes. Marsha P. Johnson um, was a black trans woman. Um, was she, I believe that she was trans, um, uh, was ki- that was killed. I, I don't remember where it was. I need to rewatch it. It's been a long time since I've watched it. Um, but again, it's that, that intersect of being a person of color, also being not only part of the gay community, but a trans woman. Definitely. Wow. Moonlight. I just thought about it. Moon- oh, Moonlight. Yes. Yes. Yeah. About I want to see that the struggles that Black people go through in the gay community or in the LGBT LGBTQ community in general. Great, a beautiful movie about not really being accepted and not really understanding who you are and mm-hmm. the stages that a lot of Black men go through. They have to stay aggressive, but they can't love who they want to love, and they can't. A lot of Black men can't be who they want to be due to the systematic oppression and the systematic state that history has put them in. So watching Moonlight is definitely a, uh, an experience that a lot of 
gay black men go through. And it's very eye-opening. So definitely watch that. It's fantastic. Awesome. If you want to see I'm, I'm taking if notes. If you want to see the Black Matters and with Pride, well, it's, a, it's definitely a good Pride movie to watch. Guys, um, if you... If you want to look at any literature, I try to repost this stuff as much as I can. I'm going to try and get a link down below of a master. Like, people have made... I mean, the things that people are doing right now is crazy. Somebody made, like, a master document of all of this literature that you can read and movies that you can watch. And, and it's tons of information. And it's right there for you in one place. So there's no excuse. Um, no. so, you know, you don't have to watch everything, but watch as much as you can and, mm -hmm. and try to make sure that you, you understand the experience that you're never going to get. Like, we're never going to get that. No. And right. that's not our place, but we need to understand it. We need to recognize it. Uh, Randall said that he watched the documentary on Sandra Bland on okay. HBO. That, that would be a good one to watch. Yeah, I'd, I need to get in the headspace to where I can sit down and watch something because it's just, I've been so fucking angry all week that, like, I, need, I, can't, I don't have space for anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first night that I've, like, felt yeah. like I can exert some energy. I guess I'd, I probably need to go to the gym, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you want to watch a classic, definitely reread or rewatch To Kill a Mockingbird. Mm, that's a great. It as that's a, a great kid. one. It, it yeah. It's the systematic oppression of how black people are in the court of law, and even though that nice. is like place back then, it's clearly still happening now. It's something that's happening that's been happening throughout all of history. Uh, yeah. Read to Kill a Mockingbird, I'm assuming like that's something I had to read in school. And it's something, and it's a movie that's easy to get through, and it definitely has some really good silent moments for you that you can think and understand the pain that um, Black people go through. Like just seeing, seeing them sit in the top balcony of the court, just all that pain and fear. That's yeah. what Black people go through whenever we hear something like this happening in court. So it's recognizable to kill a mockingbird is a fantastic movie and it's a fantastic book it's an easy read you can read it like in a week children's literature that's <laughs> great i did post in my on my instagram um a list of books that buzzfeed recommended it narrows it down to like 28 different ones and uh kayla Lindsay actually posted it so oh, nice. Our, I've got our, that in my um, bio. our ex podcast sister, uh, she was yes, on um, uh, Music yeah. City Horror with us. Yeah, yes. she was great. She was a librarian, so she knows what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to kind of delve into that. I'm gonna. I did download um, White Fragility audiobook, so that's what I'm gonna dive into first. So we'll see how that goes. I need to, I feel like I'm very much in a space where I need to be visual because it like, I don't know, it helps me focus because I'm having such a hard time focusing on things. I think that, I mean, yeah, I mean, even the medium is important. Like, I hate to be that introspective, but like if you, if you're using a medium that you're not going to pay attention to or that you're going to lose focus on, like, just don't just don't figure, yeah. just sit down and fucking pay attention. Like, mm -hmm. I, I've got to I've got to get to a headspace where I can do that um, but yeah it's I, I'm, this is helping like us all getting together and, and chatting and learning is I hope it's helping everyone like this is I, I really want to encourage and, and I don't know if maybe this means that we take a week off or maybe we do an interview um, another night but I want to go to um, one of Lovely's uh, Zoom chats. Um, if you're not familiar with Lovely, she is, I mean, she's basically a therapist. <laughs> yeah. She's incredible. And um, I think I talked about this. I don't remember when I talked about this, but the morning that everything like got really bad, um, I was in a really bad place and I was really upset really early in the morning. And she was online, and I'm, we're strangers. Like, I've never met her, 
and something told me to reach out to her and we had a great conversation she helped further you know my understanding of like what I can do and, and what I need to be doing and, and what's important um, right. cause like I'm not educated enough to make that decision so like I was just in a really upset and angry place and a lot I mean not a lot of people have told me but I've read a lot of people I was like if you think that we're like if I think I'm mad and I'm stressed out imagine living with that every day right yeah like it's just further proof that there's like we will never understand what happened and we will we'll never understand the journey and the life that a lot of black people have to live but it's not an excuse to not understand and listen and learn and that's the problem and that's what everybody's you know just fucked up on on in for decades is they just they don't give a fucking shit to learn and when you hear these stories and if you have any kind of fucking compassion for people like Everybody that's against this shit has no fucking compassion for people. And they have no reason to be against it, except for the fact that they're going to have to change and accept someone else to not be a minority. And I just think that's such a fucked up mentality that you just need to have someone beneath you at all times. It's mm-hmm. insane to me. Well, and it's, it's that and as I was like talking earlier like I very much lived in the life where like it doesn't affect me so like why do I need to worry about it and now it does affect me it very much affects me but it's always been something that's like resided in my heart and that I've never understood Um, it's like why is this happening and now that I know why I'm just like why didn't I teach myself sooner I feel the same way. But man, this is like, think about what we're living through. Like, think about how much the world has changed and we've lived through together. And I think that something that we need to remember is that we, I have experienced more good right now than bad. Yeah, the bad might be more severe, but the good right now in the world is so much bigger. And oh, God, I don't want to be a sucker for having, like, hope for shit to actually happen, you know? Oh, I have hope, too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel you. you like I said, you it's did. hard to be, like, it's hard to be hopeful. Yeah. It's very hard to be hopeful, but like I said, you've been through this before. Mm-hmm. So many times, like I said, this is another civil rights movement, and we've gone through it. It's just bigger yeah. now. Yeah. So, as long as we keep our focus straight and as long as we keep fighting and keep educating people and like I said this generation is going to be the generation for change clearly so we have to fight back that people back then like back in history had like those people's generation um, their older generations were looking at them crazy when they fought for civil rights back then so it, it, it's history repeats itself every time and it's unfortunate that in another like 70 80 years is going to happen again just because it's just a cycle that's happening unfortunately but again just like the past we're going to make it through we just got to get through the really really hard times and it's very unfortunate that we're going through these hard times i just feel like we should be at a point where we're taking bigger strides yeah yeah. Why is it so hard? Like, that's one thing. That's another thing that, like, I've had to try and figure out is, like, why is this such a hard concept for people to wrap their head around? Yeah. Especially and, in 2020. Yeah, like, and it's very much, shit. and it's very clearly generational. Very it's, generational. It's, it's generational and it's regional. And one thing that Aaron has really taught me is that it has everything to do with class because black people are the most impoverished fucking class and and so it ties i mean it literally just everything fucking intersects the justice system fucking class race everything is literally meant to suppress 
the fucking fucking African American race. It's just like, how, why is that so hard? Why is that so hard? It's so clear. It's so fucking clear. It's just everybody's gonna be like, it's been that way for years. So why change now? Like, that's the reason why. <laughs> I I literally seen this. Like, <laughs> just someone just made an argument about it. the Confederate flag. They're like, yes, it was a flag to raise for racism, and it was a flag to represent the need for slavery. And they're like, yeah that was what it represented, but it's still part of history, so it shouldn't be erased or abolished. And I was like, there's so many <laughs> that's been in history that's been erased and abolished. Are oh, yeah. Kidding? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was the worst thing. I was like, yes, bad things happen, but we shouldn't erase history. I was like, yes, you can erase, you can abolish history. You can still teach them what that flag stood for, and it did hang, but it fucking sucks. You don't see people walking out fucking swastikas all the time. That yeah. Is- <laughs> maybe <laughs> but it's still bad and that's the crazy thing is like you're seeing all of these I mean w- one of our statues got uh, pushed over mm-hmm. um, uh, it was like an Andrew Jackson statue I think and like they push what, huh? I can't remember what the guy's name is but it's a, it's a lesser known racist it's a lesser known racist is what Aaron said so we, I mean they straight up like pushed it pushed it over and you've got all these cities that are removing um, stuff from their cities because of this. Mm-hmm. And it just, I, it seems so backwards to me that they're not reining in their fucking police. It's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, I really don't want to get into the police conversation. That is... <laughs> that is um yeah we're we're not gonna go there that is yeah that that is the one thing that i don't want to um i don't yeah i don't want to discuss police brutality tonight i think that we need to keep that out of this space um so thank you for bringing that up i wish that i had yeah, thank you for pointing that out because honestly like i hadn't even thought about it until now so yeah we're we're very much not going to talk about that um but just know that we we do honor the people that are getting affected and that are fucking dying and losing their fucking eyes and so yeah we honor those people, but we're not going to discuss that um, tonight. So, um, Blue Monkey G said it's the flag of a losing group. Why do people want a flag of losers to represent them? <laughs> we know why. Because they've <laughs> never grown out of their fucking racism. Yep. And and the unfortunate the unfortunate part of it is the ignorance part of it, and I think that we're getting to a point in society where that's not an excuse anymore. It's not. Mm -hmm. If you were born and raised in a racist family and that was the only connection that you had to the world, then yeah, like, but also I feel like that there's very much a piece inside of a person that should know right from wrong and they should know that's wrong. Yes. At this point, like, I hate that argument. I was like, at the moment you turn 18, you are your own fucking person. So the fact yeah. that you can use this is you, it's you conforming to your family values and choosing to stick to a pattern that you clearly know is a losing pattern in your life just because it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I love people say that argument. My family has always been red, so we're going to be red. And I'm just like, <laughs> Yeah, but, fine. like, you should know in your but heart you that that's like, not you know right. Representing in that part. Like, you don't even know what you're representing. You're only doing it because your parents and your grandparents told you to do it. You, never, yeah. you never took a second to figure out what that means. No. Right. It, 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 you see it all the time, especially in young white people. They don't know what it means. They just follow what their parents say. And that's that. Uh, we're talking about, like, learned behavior. Like, growing up in a racist family. It's not an excuse anymore. Where I was hearing some, something about a flag. Or oh, um, flag. yeah. Well, as someone who's grown up in the South, people... I don't know if you guys can hear him. I can hear him. Not really. People, not really. Well, people view 
that as part of their identity. Yeah. So, people in the South and people in the North grew up learning two completely different histories. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't until the advent, I'd say, more recently with the internet, the last 20, 25 years, that people have started to understand that, I think it was South Carolina who started the, the first articles of the Confederacy, that it, it was about states' rights, not necessarily to own slaves, but that the federal government wasn't bringing runaways back. And that's why they seceded. But they view it as part of their identity because they feel that the North was an aggressor and they just don't want to learn. They don't, they're, they're willfully ignorant. That flag's part of my culture. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that's not culture. <laughs> that's you being you, a piece of shit. Trying, trying to use history to be a fucking piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Beans. Uh, beans, 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 beans. Well, ladies, um, the chat's quiet. Yeah. It's ten twenty-two. Um, we got to we got to two thousand dollars. <laughs> I am so thankful, um, Aaliyah. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank I you. love you Thank so you. much from the bottom of my heart, and I'm so thankful. Oh my God! Look who just got here, Mr. Sid Vivid Twenty Four. Of course, I got in hella late. Screw that, man. <laughs> so let me tell you a quick story because I don't know if you, I don't remember if you were Aaliyah, if you were in the chat in this stream. Uh, he like turned it on in his house, and then he he thought he turned it off, and he left. And he came back, and my stream was just playing on the big screen in this house the whole time. So, like, he was in my he was in my stream Noice. the whole time. I was like, "Thank you." Represent. I know it was an accident, but thank you. <laughs> That's great. Oh man, my was well, somebody said. Uh, well, Blue Monkey G said, "My grandpa was with the South, so I'll be the South <laughs> with the South till I die." <laughs> dude like that's all i grew up around like i'm very much from a redneck town like you can hear my accent i'm from east tennessee borderline virginia and that's all that's all like i mean one of our high schools had like pretty much like a confederate fucking flag theme they were like the rebels or something and it was fucking ridiculous it was fucking ridiculous look here i've been busy all day <laughs> But I love all of you and what you all are doing. We love you. Anyways, I guess I love you too, I suppose. <laughs> late, but it's fine. Love it's you, okay. At least he, at least he, um, at least he, at least he with, it. with the henny. <laughs> this is what I, Aaliyah I, with the henny. <laughs> he said Aaliyah with the henny. I love it. Oh, man. Always. Where's, the, yeah, where's Alexis when you need her? Huh? Where's Alexis when you need her? Exactly. Uh, I, wish I, I do have some pineapple juice in there, but I didn't want to drink a lot. <laughs> I tried it, man. I tried it when we were in Phoenix, and I was not was into like, it. Oh, <laughs> but I'm also like, until until I developed this white claw habit, I was not a drinker. Not really a drinker. But I tried it. Yeah, you did. And I you did it. Like, and oh, she out here now. Like, <laughs> but let me tell you, Lena, you've heard my Shinsuke Nakamura story. Oh yes. If Aaliyah had not so got up to go to that bar to the bar and get a drink, <laughs> I would have never had a moment with Shinsuke Nakamura. So thank you, Aaliyah, oh, for, the, oh, for I deciding to go get a drink. I needed to drink because I was sitting next to my favorite wrestler in the whole wide world. I need to chill Amazing. out. <laughs> I'm gonna chill out. <laughs> oh, I love oh, it. Man, that was a fun night. Um, have you heard the new Run the Jewels album? No. I haven't, but I yes. did talk a lot on the Russell Rap uh, Get playlist. Away. Of the Get away from me. I do it's, it. yeah, oh, it's Randall's hosting. Super good. Thank you, Randall. <laughs> Out here in these claw streets. Listen, tonight, <laughs> I gave, listen, I gave this a go. I can't say that I don't like White Claw more. I think so, I'm just like Tangerine White Claw tangerine blackberry uh oh see I, I fixed my alert box thank you for following oh, yeah. thank you 
Thanks for the follow. Here's a complimentary bean. <laughs> hey, my baby. son. This is my son. Hey, little boy. Hey, oh, little let boy. Let me see. I don't. Nobody's seen Frank tonight. Oh. Where are you at, Frank? He's back there. He's <gasps> asleep. Oh. Frank, you want to say hi? <laughs> <laughs> My bedtime was it's two like, it's hours about that ago. time. It's about that time. My bedtime was it, yeah. My bedtime was like an hour and a half ago. So guys, thank Same you. Piece. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, big Frank. Hey, <laughs> usually I'll get big him Frank over energy. here and he'll jump up and we'll hold hands and he'll give me a smooch. No. Let the king sleep. Yes. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> let the king sleep. Okay, so thank you so much um, to everyone who has stopped by um, and donated. The campaign is active until the 6th. So um, I am – my streaming schedule is going to be played by ear, um, but it ends on Saturday – I do not have any plans to stream either of those days, um, but you never know. So my, my campaign will be active until Saturday. I probably will not stream again until Sunday, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to stream Sunday. I might just need to take some quiet time. So um, I will keep you guys up to date on Twitter. Please um, hit uh, Aaliyah up on Twitter. Get Lena. Get me if you want to stay more up to date when I'm going to be popping on here. Uh, I am uh, way too active on Twitter right now. <laughs> Not so much Instagram, because, like, I just can't even stay on Instagram right now, but, like, Twitter is, like, very much where I'm at right now. It's where I'm, where we're all, I think, being most vocal, where we're posting as many resources that we can, as many benefits that we can. Um, so, yeah, I feel like Twitter is where everybody needs to be right now. That's where you can get your most accurate um, updates um, on what's going on. So, um, oh, Aaliyah. Aaliyah just gifted a sub to Lauren Moran. Happy early birthday, Lauren. Happy early birthday, Tina. Um, <laughs> technically, I guess her... Um, her birthday is like in 30 minutes. In 30 minutes. In her time. So, <laughs> so in 30 minutes, uh, please tell Lauren Moran a uh, happy Lauren birthday. Look at her. <laughs> she said, oh my oh, God. I love what? her. OMG. <laughs> Go back. Tomorrow, but uh, it is also Brianna Taylor's birthday. And in yes. honor of her, we will be, I would encourage everybody to wear yellow tomorrow. And the color of the awesome. I own yellow. I hope I own and yellow. Should be celebrated. They're opening up her case. The FBI is opening up the case. Great. Which is a wow. Thing for the movement. So, um, totally, it is Lauren Moran slash Brianna Taylor day tomorrow. Yay. So, both of them celebrate the life and the death. Yes. Remember, remember great. absolutely. We celebrate the ones that we have. So, yes. Yeah. And guys. Fucking stay safe. Yes, Please yeah. research how to attend and protect yourself at a protest. Don't trust cops. No, not right now. Um, don't trust the fucking government right now. Um, we have to stick together. We're literally all we fucking have right now. Does yeah. anybody want to get anything else important out before we sign off? Just love each other, dude. Yeah. Love each other. Take care of yourself. Your mental health. Yeah, dude. Adnaris, we love you. Guys, thank you so much. Um, Isa, I see you uh, showed up a little late, um, but we love you. Thank you for um, – Randall, I know you're always here, Randall. <laughs> I'm always acknowledging your presence, whether you know it or not. I know you're always here. Um, thank you again, guys. I honestly, like – I turned off the viewers tonight, so I don't even know how many people have been here, but, like, you guys have been awesome, and we didn't have one negative message, and I think that that's important, so yes. yeah. let's cr continue to create a fucking positive space, yes. because it's literally Amen. the most important thing for everybody right now is to keep the space positive, but fucking fuck 12.
Buck 12. And that's the best way to end the stream. Yes. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you I so love much. It. I love you guys Bye. so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>